Uh, good evening, all. Uh, welcome to the Delanco Township Committee meeting, September 13th, 2021. This is being held via, via Zoom remote access, uh, normally held at the Delanco Township Municipal Building, 770 Coopertown Road, Delanco, New Jersey. Uh, roll call, please. Mrs. Lord. Mr. Brown. Here. Mrs. Patrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olette. Here. Mr. Templeton. Here. Uh, let's see, also present, Mr. Schwab, our township administrator, Mr. Fox, our township engineer. Mr. Heinhold is unable to make it tonight, but we're expecting his partner, Mr. Tom Coleman, uh, at some time. Uh, Mrs. Lohr, municipal clerk, Mrs. Martin, deputy municipal clerk. Mr. Fenimore, we're expecting possibly, and Chief DeSanto, we're expecting him he is in, he's just, uh, he's just coming in on, he's coming on now. All right. And let's see, any other visitors, distinguished guests tonight? All right. Uh, before we get started, before the flag salute, um, um, I wanted to offer a moment of silence, a moment of uh, thought. Um, Last Saturday was an unfortunate anniversary, 20 years after 9-11, and this past couple weeks was the end of uh, two decades of uh, uh, conflict and endless, it used to be endless wars. Um, and I just wanted to offer up a, a, an opportunity, a moment, if we can think about the last 20 years and where our country was, 20 years and a week ago, and uh, where we are today. And uh, think for a moment of the uh, 2,996 people who died on 9-11, uh, the 4,431 uh, servicemen and women who died in Iraq, the 2,461 servicemen and women who died in Afghanistan, and the 53,307 servicemen and women who were wounded and maimed in the course of the last 20 years. Um, we can take a moment, moment to ponder their sacrifice and their families and uh, our country over the last 20 years. Thank you. Uh, flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and justice for all. Uh, sunshine statement, Mrs. Lohr. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. Written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of, of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. This meeting is uh, via remote access over the Zoom, Zoom platform. Um, the meeting passcode and meeting ID have been posted on the township website and different access options for this meeting. Advanced public comments will be accepted via a written letter or electronic mail up to six hours prior to the commencement of the meeting. And uh, members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting, during the public comment sessions may either make their comments via audio option or by typing their comment or question via the Zoom platform chat option. Again, the um, agenda for this has been available on the township website, delancotownship.com. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. 
Uh, tonight, uh, the op to open the agenda, we're going to have a discussion on the disposition of the structure at 200 Ash, uh, also known as the Canvas Shop, Canvas Factory, uh, Ridgeway Shoe Factory. Um, there's been uh, 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 Mr. Schwab and Mr. Fox uh, and township staff have compiled uh, uh, a lot of information that was posted on the website, uh, numerous reports, documentation of what's transpired over the last almost year and a half uh, since we acquired the property. And uh, a lot of good reading in there, probably one of the most informative pieces uh, was the information that was summarized in the opening document that Mr. Schwab and Mr. Fox uh, pulled together as far as uh, cost estimations for various, various options. So uh, uh, this discussion has uh, been postponed a couple times, uh, originally intended to occur last spring and then other events uh, intervened. But anyway, here we are. And uh, uh, I don't know if we'll reach a consensus or, or some other uh, option that uh, um, may come of, of um, be proposed or offered tonight that uh, wasn't fully explored, but uh, wanted to give it as much of the public an opportunity to air this out and talk about it. And uh, it's, it's something that we can't hang on to forever. We kind of have to make a decision at some time. So uh, with that, I think I'll start off with just uh, questions or comments from the public. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll cycle through the committee and, and uh, uh, township staff uh, if, uh, for their comments on this. So. Uh, if you do have a comment or question, uh, as usual, during public comment, state your name, address, and uh, uh, we'll probably kind of, uh, as we get through the evening, try not to repeat uh, the, the questions or, or the same fact that we're looking for and, and try to get as much information uh, uh, regarding this topic as we can out. So, and with that, the, uh, this session, public session regarding this topic, the camera shop, is open to the public. Oh, hi, I'm Carrie Fitzgerald I'm from Buttonwood Street. I just sent a note through the chat requesting permission to speak. Um, is that okay or is somebody else first in line? No, nope, it looks like you're the, you're the first one up to bat. So uh, good evening, Ms. Fitzgerald. Okay. May, I, may I have your address? Yes, please. Oh, yes. I'm at 219 Buttonwood, and I'm actually hanging out in my backyard. And Thank there is the, the factory. I don't know if you can see it behind me, but I'm actually like right next door to the factory and that property. And I'm on my phone, so I apologize for the video. Um, and I did read a lot of what was on the website. And thank you so much, because it really was um, very informative, things that even I didn't know. And I've been in the neighborhood for about 32 years now. Um, just some questions. I did read that there is consideration for um, using the the um, uh, using this site as access to the creek. And if I interpreted the text correctly, it seemed to be that the emphasis would be on non motorized boats. And I wanted to, you know, definitely express my hope that if there is some kind of um, access, um, non motorized boats would be obviously preferable because this is a residential neighborhood. And um, the noise of, of outboard motors would be a consideration. And also because Buttonwood Street is a really skinny street. It's super skinny. And right now, even though Buttonwood is technically a two-way street, the reality is that there is so much traffic and there's so much um, people are already parking on both sides of Buttonwood that anytime you want to go down the street, you pull over so that the other guy can get past or he pulls over so that you can get past. So it's technically two way. In reality, not so much. And I think in our neighborhood, there is a concern about um, trailers. You know, people are, are hauling their boats on trailers. So we wanted to just remind the committee um, that Buttonwood is a really skinny street and asking how were you envisioning that if you do end up creating a, um, a boat launch. How are you envisioning access? Would people be coming down um, Creek Road and Pennsylvania Avenue? Or has that not even, it's so far ahead of where you are right now that 
it's not a discussion point? It's, that's uh, your last statement probably, probably encapsulates it. That's uh, a little farther down the road than we are right now, but it's all the points that you mentioned in the last couple of minutes that we've been thinking about. Uh, uh, the committee back in June, uh, uh, the consensus and, and the, 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 the the opinion of the, of the committee, if I can, if I can say so, and if one of my colleagues, uh, uh, if I'm if I'm getting ahead of myself, can please chime in. But the, the the intent of the committee for this property is to maintain it as as public property and and for open space. Um, we have not. Uh, there's some procedural steps to to legally uh, state that and protect it and and so forth. We have not done that. Uh, but that was just to get an idea of the committee's position on, on this particular property, separate from a consideration of the building. But that's uh, the things that you bring up are, are high on the consideration, uh, uh, our intent in, in kind of just kind of framing this out is yes, it would be a canoe and kayak access, uh, no motorized, uh, uh, you know, no jet skis, no power, power craft or anything like that there are commercial marina, marinas that uh, can provide that access and uh, and have enough room to to accommodate that so it's not something um, we even considered for the site um, yeah, and the, you appreciate the, the location in, in the neighborhood you, you know you, you you put it nicely that it's it's very it's a very dense neighborhood and that's also a consideration in some of the other uses that some people have mentioned that uh, it, it creates a problem that if you, if some other uh, uh, dream uses that some people have come up with, uh, or you know, uh, uh, off the cuff type things, or, or uh, oh, it'd be great if it was this. The, the density of the neighborhood kind of makes that difficult. So that's what we wanted to hear about tonight. So continue. And and I. I appreciate that. I mean, speaking for, um, you know, the Buttonwood Street crew here um, and a lot of the houses, yes, there are some single family homes, but a lot of the houses are twins, um, multi unit. So again, it, you're, you're perfectly correct saying it's a very dense neighborhood already. Um, I did want to ask about if the committee does envision this as a, as a public space um, and certainly proximity to the creek. I get that. I get why you're probably heading in that direction. Have you considered parking and where parking would be, or is that kind of another point that is again so far off because right now you're not sure, you know, how the land's going to end up being used? Again, true. Uh, we haven't gotten that far, but again, it's 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 a constraint where that's that's in our minds for. Uh, Perspective future use as as a parking and, and access to the rain focus and how that would be managed and constrained or uh, we don't want to create something that sounds really good that it's an ac access to the waterway which everyone wants and it's it's, it's a long term goal but we don't want to create a nuisance to you in the neighborhood so it's it's we want to be very careful as we as we take these steps. Okay, and then, and I know Mr. Templeton, I think I had the pleasure of speaking with you a long, long, long time ago on the phone. And I just kind of mentioned in passing, and this was quite a long time ago, mentioning in passing that whatever becomes of the building, whether it stays, whether it goes, whether it's whatever becomes of the building. I do have a concern having, you know, lived here for over three decades about rodents. And I would be willing to bet, you know, dollars to donuts that probably somewhere in the building, you know, maybe some rodent issues. And I guess we have a concern in the neighborhood about if, you know, anytime something's touched, old buildings are touched, construction, whatever, you get your rats, you get your mice. Um, this, this neighborhood is raccoon central. And I, I guess my, my request would be if the building is going to be dealt with, if you could have a pest control expert get to the site before people start knocking things down, banging things, whatever, because um, I have had an issue, you know, with, with rats, with mice, other neighbors have had, you know, mice issues. Um, we do have rat snakes in the neighborhood, you know, they live down near the creek and where there are rat snakes, there are rats. And I just have this vision of, you know, 
demolition starting or remodeling and then things coming out of that building that probably have been living there for a long time since it's empty. But that is, again, just put that on the, the list of things. It is. After you mentioned that, I, I spoke with Mr. F Mr. Fox about that, and and he's fairly confident there, uh, there are uh, rats or would not be an occupant because there's no food there. Uh, rats go, they, you know, they go where food is, whether it refuse or someone putting out a dish of cat food at night for whatever for a feral cat or a fox or something like that well the rat likes that um, you're more likely as we talked about you know the raccoons so uh, mr. Fox has assured me that he would uh, he would catch all the raccoons before we do anything there himself catch yeah. them. <laughs> uh, if, I, if I could add um, part of the demolition specifications and it's and it's for, for any building we demolish, um, the contractor who's awarded the bid has to have a certified pest control expert come out, inspect the site, um, make sure there are no rodents in there, if need be, put in traps, whatever they need to do before they can start the demolition. And that will be part of the contract for the general contractor of the demolition project. Thank you so much for allowing me to ask my questions. I appreciate that. I'm going to mute myself and get back off camera. Who's next? Uh, this is Phil Jenkins. May I say something? Sure, Phil. I see okay. you. This is Phil Jenkins, 415 3rd Street, Delanco. Um, personally, I wasn't in favor of purchasing the Fisher Canvas building, and I still don't think we as a township should be purchasing it or even doing anything with it. We're losing $10,000 a year in property taxes off of it. Now we're talking about spending another $100,000 to tear it down. I just, you know, and of course we have to pay prevailing wage to whoever is going to be tearing it down. I really think that, you know, you want it, you bought it to protect it from being turned into apartments. I say change the zoning on it. That way you can limit the amount of apartments that are in it and then sell it. Now, as for access to the creek, I've been playing in the river and the creek for years. Creek moves a lot faster than the river. I, you know, I'm friends with everybody at the marina and I see boats going in with engines on them that still have a hard time in the creek. We had a public boat ramp at the end of Union Avenue. If you're going to be putting canoes and non-powered kayaks, non-powered vessels into the water, that would be a much safer, more, you know, a better place to put them in than putting them in at the end of Ash Street. I just, you know, if you look at you know, some of the buildings or some of the things we tore down at Tiemann's gas station. We're getting no tax revenue out of that. We have a park now where Bud Wallace's gas station used to be. You know, there was a structured air. We tore that down. I just don't think we should be tearing down or be involved in the structure business. I mean, it's nice to have a park and to have something, but how many do we need? I just think we as a township should be out of that business and shouldn't be involved in it. That's all I have to say on that. Appreciate the good comments. Thanks, Phil. No, You're welcome. Good, good, good points, and uh, especially on the current. It is, it is an issue. Uh, uh, next. This is Shirley Rossi speaking. Hello. Hello. You're on. Go ahead. Interesting meeting. Hello. You're on. Go ahead, Mrs. Rossi. Okay. Call me Shirley, please. Um, I'm listening to all of you, and you all have good points, and um, I know where you're coming from or where you're going. Um, I grew up as a kid in this town. I remember all the businesses that were along the creek there, right in front of the creek. My grandparents, my great-grandfather had a fishing, did the fishing in town, and my grandfather had the ice business. So I'm familiar with that neighborhood. I grew up in it. I feel, and from day one for many years, I've had a vision in mind for that stretch of ground. We go around Delanco and we we do everything in all the other areas, but we've never done anything nice for that particular area. And that the homes down there are, are well kept. The people are wonderful people. They, they contribute a lot to the town. My vision of that area would be to have a walking park from one end as far as whatever the the uh, 
length or whatever you have, to walk and have street lights there, have a couple ben- have some benches there, and have a grass area there, and have it like a river bank, so that the people like they walk on the the Delaware River area would have an area down there. I think the people down there need a a beautiful um, park or whatever you want to call it to look at, and the water is there. And I think that it would add a lot to their neighborhood and it would give them some place to walk uh, in the evening, take their dogs out and visit or whatever, if it's two, three blocks long. I'm not in favor of putting any uh, outboard or inboard motor boats off of there. And I really think if you made it a, um, a park for that part of the community, it would really, really be appreciated by the people there. Uh, the, I thought for years it would it would work there. I remember when the when that was a boat dock. I remember the boats coming in there. And um, boating today is a little different than uh, years ago. And we have the marina in town, and there's a lot of marinas and uh, a few over in uh, Delran and Riverside area, and I think that for us to get involved and worry about the boats, I I think um, maybe we don't need to. I am in favor of tearing the building down. I think it's, since you bought it, it would be stupid to do anything else other than tear it down. I wouldn't put it on hold. I would um, definitely take care of the rodents before that because I know uh, about two years ago the people down on Orchard Avenue, somebody tore something down and the people were inundated with rodents and they ate through the walls of their house and everything else and it caused severe damage. And they were shocked because they had no idea that they were even there. And uh, it was a big thing. And I think that, you know, if you clean that up properly and take care of those things and just tear it down and make it a beautiful walking area with some tree street lights and a bench, some trash cans. I think it would really be worthwhile to the people there. I am not in favor of apartments. I'm not in favor of any more housing there. It's a congested area. The streets have problems with the parking, like the other lady said, and it's it's it doesn't have all the space that the other houses on this side of Burlington Avenue has. So I'm I'm for your, I, I like what you wrote up. I like the uh, uh, the information that I read and I'm all for you doing that, but I, I'm not interested or I'm not fond with handling the boats or the canoes or the kayaks because you're going to have, you're going to have traffic in there unless you could buy up the rest of that area and make it an off street parking lot, but that's still going to put traffic in that area. And that is those streets are tight and I'm down them every day. So I think a nice, a nice pocket park in that area would be an asset to the town and to the, the, the people there. That's it. Thank you. Uh, appreciate the, uh, the good points, uh, Mrs. Rossi and uh, uh, your, uh, your knowledge of, the, of your personal knowledge of that, that neighborhood and and, uh, and and how it is today. So really appreciate the, the, uh, your comments there. Thank you. Uh, who's next? Aaron, do you have anybody in the chat that's? Mayor, there, there was a comment in the chat. I'm not sure if Janice um, wants to read that. And uh, I don't see any hands raised. Okay. Oh, um, Liz Mattisett. She has her hand raised. I'm sorry, Liz. Just that's okay. Had. I just raised it. All right. Um, I would just. I, I know. Um, Name and address, Liz. Oh, I'm sorry. New address. Liz Mattisett, 304 Center Avenue. Recently, um, relocated from um, 737 Franklin Street. So I lived in that neighborhood for about 30 years, and um often looked at that building and, you know, thought what is the potential of it. And um, I always thought it would make great, like really nice condos, but 
Um, I realize that that's probably uh, not a realistic vision for this building. I just want to um, make a comment that I think the historic significance of that building, even though it may not qu qualify to be on a historic register, but I just think that the history of the building and the industry that was in this area is an important aspect of the building of the whole area and going forward i hope that the township committee takes that into consideration i'm not really sure um what kind of future uses might be appropriate for that building it would take a lot of money to um, make it useful i mean the town could use some additional facilities like a community center or something like that. Um, but I know it's going to be a big project and it would take a lot of money. Um, so I realize the practicality of that. I would hate to see the building go down just because that it does represent a huge part of Delanco's history. Um, but, you know, that's, you have to be practical. Um, and I also, even though, um, I'm not sure that that would make really good access for non-motorized vehicles because of the creek and the um, swift flow of the creek. However, Delanco does need some public access to the river. That would be a really nice thing, um, but I'm not sure that's an appropriate spot for it. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say is just, you know, make the comment that I think the history of the industry and um, the building is important to consider. Thank you. Thank you, good comments. Is this a good time for me to chime in? Uh, Peter Fritz, uh, 303 Union Avenue in Delanco, uh, member of the history board, but not speaking for the history board tonight. Um, I did want to, um, first of all, uh, uh, Thanks, uh, Liz, for, for that intro, because I feel uh, strongly about the history of, of that area. Um, Delanco, uh, that's where Delanco's in, uh, industry was. It was on the creek, it wasn't on the river. And it was within that couple of uh, uh, block um, area that we had uh, uh, quite a few industries uh, starting off with the this, this, uh, sawmill in 1848. Um, I have done a, a study of that building now. Uh, the history board uh, is now engaged in a project that we call uh, our heritage project. And what we're trying to do is to identify the buildings in town that we think have significant her uh, heritage. Uh, and then we do a deep dive uh, to see you know, if our um, impressions are correct. And then uh, we have a process to, to, to go through and to approve uh, certain places as being designated as historic, um, historic sites. And um, uh, I did do a, a nomination for this building. And at our last uh, history board meeting, we did vote to accept it as a heritage site based on its uh, long, long history, not just the canvas factory. I think the canvas factory employed five people maybe um, but uh, going back to um, Andrus Ridgeway, uh, when he established that, that, that business in 1881, um, the, the first um, factory was the, the frame factory in 1885, I believe. And then it, it was eventually replaced by the, the, the brick building that's there now in uh, 1912. Um, and that um, business was going for almost 50 years when it folded in 1928. Um, then there was the Atlantic Tube Company that came in after that, which uh, made uh, cardboard uh, tubes commercially. They eventually went to a different facility over on Cooperstown, uh, uh, on Cooper Street. And then um, there was a series of a couple of marine um, services uh, centers that came into the building, used that building uh, for a while. And all that happened before it became the canvas factory. So. Um, uh, I, I kind of prefer to call it the, the shoe factory rather than the canvas uh, factory because I think it just gives a, a, a better sense of where it started. 
So we do have a history. Um, it has been de de designated as a historic site. Whether the building stays or goes, we would still consider it to be uh, part of our heritage. And we, we, if the building does go, it would be our plan to put up some kind of um, uh, interpreter signage that would attest to the long history of the building. And I, I think that would be helpful. Um, I, I did want to give uh, kudos to the um, to Taylor Design uh, for their uh, knowledge and understanding of the Lanco history. Uh, I read almost all of the material that was uh, on tap for tonight's meeting. And as you know, some of those were pretty prodigious works, but uh, the, um, especially the, the first one, the Taylor design one, but uh, they did re recognize the, um, the history of that portion of, of the town. They had a good understanding of the various um, industries that were down there over, over the time. And they had a good understanding of that building. I was pleased to see that. Uh, thank you for including my uh, the heritage nomination materials as part of the materials. Oh, I understand the economic stand the, of the deterioration of the building over the last few years. Um, so whether it stays or goes, I just want to make sure that we uh, acknowledge and uh, respect the building for the, the for the history that it had. And I wanted to thank um, all of you for including that history in the materials that were that were out there. I, I was kind of pleasantly surprised to see that you included two of my uh, publications that I, I had done previously on the uh, Delanca waterfronts and the Delanca watermen. Um, and uh, they were fun to put together. And I think they give you kind of a picture of what this town has been like uh, over the years. Um, so I, um, so I think I just wanted to, to speak on the behalf of history. I did have a, a kind of a follow-up question that I did see um, that um, there was a proposal out for um, a building to replace that building if it is torn down. And um, I saw that it was described as a um, 5,000 square foot building. And I have really no idea at this point what would be planned for it. But if you are going to do a purpose designed building, then I would hope that you would get a committee together that would represent the, the various stakeholders that would have an opportunity to uh, put some uh, ideas together for what should be included in that building. Um, I was involved with a process like this when we built the um, arts building at Petty School. Um, and I was on the committee that helped to design that building and that's how we did it. It was a, um, a very nice process. Uh, I left um, the, my employment there before they actually built the building, but they built the building almost exactly the way that we designed it uh, by committee, so. Yeah, that, yeah. that, 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 that small structure, I think was, was a back of the envelope or the front of the envelope uh, cost analysis, just of, of what potentially could. There, there, it's really uh, just a rough, rough, you know, rough take on, you know, what, uh, what's some other structure to provide some kind of uh, useful amenity at, at the park there. Yeah. Uh, it was just for a cost analysis comparison. So that's all that. Okay. Uh, but, but just thinking about that, if it was a 5,000 square foot building, you're talking about a building that's 50 by 100 feet or uh, two stories at 50 by 50, you know. Um, so um, that, you uh, it doesn't sound like it's a big building. I put that building in my side yard for, on, for that size. It was going to be on, on one story. Oh, and you probably would want it on one story for uh, handicap access and all of that. So, um, no, the just, town uh, appreciates uh, your work and the history board's uh, good work in, in, in documenting this property and the building and, and really giving giving a good uh, taste and flavor of what was here. And you're perfectly co uh, correct. In, uh, that it was the shoe factory and uh, I guess in, in the last couple of years I've gotten pre-programmed to say canvas shop you know and, and just uh, dealing with that but uh, sure. you're entirely correct that uh, as the shoe factory is, is the longer lived uh, purpose of that structure so but uh, thank you for the, the good work on that and documenting that and, and so many other places in town.
And I was hoping that somebody could come through with some sort of a plan. And I, I know that there had been some exploration done to use that. Um, I, I do some work with the Rancocas Pathways uh, group, which is the canoe kayak uh, group that's working on the designating the Rancocas Creek as a national water trail. Mm -hmm. And we, we have, thankfully, we have the endorsement um, of Township Committee for that effort to have that designation made. Uh, so I do spend some time with, with that group. And I know one of their issues is access to the creek. And so I was very pleased to see that you were uh, considering access to the creek. And I have had a conversation with John Anderson, who runs that program. And he said that the access as it exists now, which he, he's been down to, to check out, is, uh, is just fine. Uh, the, the concrete ramp that's there. Uh, he said, you know, if it, if it got mucky, you, you might want to hose it off. But it wasn't a, a bad access as no. far as that went. He has said that this is a tough uh, stretch of the creek when on an outflowing tide, um, but uh, that the better canoers and, and kayak people could could use it effectively. And it might be a good place for a um, okay. canoe kayak livery service yeah. where you might be able to you know, drop your car, put your kayak on a trailer, get it in a van, they would drive upstream, drop you in the creek someplace and you would float back to the beginning. That's what a livery service does. And it would be right. nice if we had something like that available. All right, appreciate that, uh, Peter. Thank you for, for your good comments. I'd like to get some other voices sure. in. Thank uh, you. But uh, thank you again. Uh, I got a message, uh, Mr. McLaughlin. Yes, hi there. Uh, this is uh, Steve McLaughlin. I live at 740 Francocos Avenue. Uh, about a block away from the, the old shoe factor. Uh, so I just have a couple quick comments. Uh, I would like to see, so I, I'm fine with the building coming down. I mean, it just doesn't seem to make, I would be fine with apartments in the building, frankly, but uh, if it's not gonna go that way, it's, it, I don't really see somebody buying that building and making a good commercial use of it. So, um, you know, in, in that direction, you know, there's just like not a clear way for that building to be used. Um, so. I'm fine with it coming down. I will say whatever plans you come up with for that area and the adjacent, uh, the, the current boat yard, I would like to see the environmental concerns be front and center. Um, and that's, yeah, really, I would like to make, I'd like to see you make choices that are kind of conservative and, and taking a light touch. So instead of building a concrete building, um, for instance, we're pouring a lot of concrete, uh, wooden structures would be preferable. Uh, instead of having, you know, large sweeping green lawns, which require uh, a lot of irrigation and, and uh, you know, maintenance over the over time, I'd like to see meadows and wildflowers and and you know paths running through them. Um, so yeah, that's really my main focus. Is is I hope that this can be that you can take a light touch environmentally. So, thanks. Thank you. Uh, yeah, good points. Very excellent points. Uh, Let's see, any other hands raised? Uh, Mr. Fox, uh, let me, uh, uh, regarding the, the, the environmental, the status of the environmental surveys, phase one, phase two, just a short uh, overview of what's, where we are on that, if you could. Um, we have performed a, a, a phase one and phase two. Um, there is contamination on the site. Um, it's considered historic fill. Um, what historic fill is, is pretty much any fill that's been brought in by, by man. Um, there is some levels above the residential standards of, of certain contaminants. Um, it could be uh, rectified by, by two means, actually. Um, if it could be excavated out, the historic fill could be excavated out and new fill being brought in. And we have an estimate of about thirty thousand dollars to to accomplish that, um, or you could cap what's there and leave it. It's there's nothing saying it has to be cleaned up. Um, if we left it there, we would have to pay about two thousand dollars a year to DEP. Um, essentially, it's just the fee that they would collect until it's cleaned up and, and no further action is required. Um, so, so that's where it stands. It's it's. There's two small areas that did show contamination in, in, in our shanty. There was an accessory building to, to the shoe factory that was uh, initially, I think, coal-fired, coal 
and then uh, a gasoline or diesel powered and there's some residual of, of those material that uh, are in the, in the soil and then a historic fill is some material that was added to the creek front I guess to build out land into the creek and maybe backfill behind a bulkhead that uh, pre-existed and so that historic fill is a mishmash of rubble and things whatever they threw in there uh, is that a good description of it yes okay so just one thing I can tack on would be that uh, an option that you might consider is using plants to decontaminate the soil so with things like buckwheat sunflowers there's lots of examples uh, are one way to pull heavy metals and other contaminants out of the out of the ground um, so just something to consider thanks okay, thank you all right, thank you, Mr. Fox. Uh, I've got a hand raised. Mayor, you have a, Alyssa De La Pena would like to make a comment? Yes, please. Hi, uh, my name is Alyssa De La Pena, 227 Center Avenue. Um, I wanna start off by saying I read through the comment or I read through the documents posted online by the township. Um, I was surprised at how thorough everything was and I wanna thank you for making it all public. Um, I am all for saving historic structures in the town um, and I would love to see it restored or reused or made safe until we can decide how to reuse it. Um, but the cost of the remediation for remediation or restoration just, it's so costly. It just doesn't seem justifiable at this time for the township. I don't think we can afford that um, just from what I've been seeing. Um, if we did demolish it, I do think the site should be considered for historic designation. Um, it's a huge part of the town's beginning. Um, I like what Phil Jenkins said about the idea of changing the zoning on the building. Perhaps um, you know a developer could come in and restore the building, um, turn it into something other than affordable housing or something that wouldn't bring a lot of traffic to the area. Um, another comment I wanted to make is about the current on the creek opening up the area to um, non-motorized or even motorized boats is gonna encourage people to come down there and possibly try and swim in the creek. Um, the current in the creek's pretty strong and I know we've had a lot of drownings in the Delaware River already. So that's just something um, to keep in mind as well. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, excellent. Uh, thanks for those points. Uh, I think uh, next up, Mr. Madalevich. He's muted. Mayor, we do have a few um, comments okay. in the chat. Yeah. All right, I'll come back, Bill first, and then uh, we'll get the comments from Mrs. Lord. Okay. Hi, I think. Good. Should put yours on mute. It is mute. Anyway, I'm Bill Matalevich. I live at 304 Center. Formerly, I lived at 737 Franklin Street. Uh, I'd like to see the building stabilized until an adaptive reuse can be found. I think it was, it was identified as a typical industrial building at the turn of the century, but I think it's probably the last one left in this area. Riverside has done a great job of ripping down everything they have. Towel Mill is gone. So it was originally vernacular, now it's unique. So I think it has some unique construction aspects that would be interesting to save. Yeah, it's gonna cost a fortune. There are grants available for that. I'd be willing to help look for them. The contamination is minimal. In fact, it's no less contamination there than any other waterfront property in Delanco. Um, and the fact that the Rancocas Greenway is gonna be finished shortly. We have a lot of bicycle traffic, a lot of pedestrian use going through the area. I think it's a natural location for a bicycle rental place or some kind of pedestrian node. So I think it wouldn't take much to come up with a good reuse. all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Laurie, you had some comments and uh, or questions? Yes, we have a few people who have um, posted in the chat section of the Zoom platform. Um, and excuse me if I pronounce your name wrong, Kat Tur Tursix Keeley. This um, has uh, written, this property brought in approximately 10,000 in taxes. I was wondering if you could talk about how the township's purchase of this lot has affected tax dollars for the schools. If it will 
If it will have a negative impact, what is your plan to make up that lost tax revenue? $10,000 on a $6 million budget isn't, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's an amount of tax revenue that's obviously lost, but the, uh, uh, you have to look at, uh, the, the benefit or the value that's gained, uh, to the, to the neighborhood and the community. If you're creating something that's, uh, a useful recreational space. And that's that's an intangible and it's hard to put a dollar value on that uh, because it's spread across a much larger larger area. But it's uh, it's it's a it's a, it's not a, a question or not a value, a, a dollar figure that you can get get down to an exact figure. Um, you know, there's no um, there's no really the way to put that on the scale. So, you have another question or comment? Uh, may uh, I uh, just toss in uh, behind Bill Matalevich, uh, where he was uh, mentioning finding another use. Uh, it was interesting that- um, Peter, uh, can uh, Janice finish? finish oh, early? I'm sorry, uh, Janice, I, I thought- There, you were are, there are a few, few comments in the chat that people have posted. Um, so I will get through those. So, um, the next one is, is from Kevin. He already spoke, but he also uh, asked if there was any chance up for outside funding to pay for some of the cost of whatever option is selected or would it be paid for by the residents of Delanco? And that's Kevin McLaughlin. That's actually Steven's father. Oh, I'm that's sorry. That's Dave. right. I'm sorry. Steve spoke previously. This is Kevin yeah. McLaughlin asking if there's any outside funding for any of the options or would it be... Um, uh, paid by uh, by the residents. Uh, DEP has a brownfields uh, program. Uh, actually, Mr. Medalevich set up a, a webinar uh, that I uh, uh, attended a couple months ago mm -hmm. on that, uh, and that's a partnership with DEP and uh, uh, I think Probably NIT. So not really many but uh, uh, more zooms. Yeah, there are some. Someone else's. Can you go mute? There's someone, some background conversation there. Um, yes, there, there is some funding. Again, it's, uh, you know, there's an application process, process and it's competitive in, in a lot of cases, but uh, that's something that we would be seeking obviously to, uh, to minimize the direct impact on our budget, so. And then, um... Also, Bill Matalevich uh, had posted, but he did speak, um, and I won't repeat his, his comments were the same. And we have, um, well, Mr. Matalevich also just posted at 20K per student per year, the savings and school budget are more covered by keeping it from conversion to residential. And that's what's in the chat um, function. Oh, and then, um, Kat Tur Tursis Keeley just posted, agreed. Um, she likes the idea of making it another use so there is new tax revenue. All right, thank you for the good comments. Uh, I just uh, want uh, Mike, can I uh, pile in on, on the, something that um, Matt, Matt Levich said um, about the, the use? Uh, I just wanted to point out that the front page article today in the Burlington County Times uh, talked about a building um, I think it was called the, the grist mill or the uh, something like that it, in uh, Medford that has been um, stabilized and made available. And there are a number of um, uh, businesses that have gone into there and they were just announcing the opening of a, uh, of a craft beer uh, yeah. place uh, along with some other businesses that are in there. And there's a similar building that's in Mount uh, Holly that's along the creek um, that uh, where they have drama group that it is using a theater at one end of the building and some other things. So there are some models around for uh, some uh, buildings finding other uses. I mean, even even Perkins Center for the Arts in Morristown. Uh, I worked there for a couple of years and I know that operation. And so sometimes these old buildings can be put to good use, but I understand the, the economics of it would make this very difficult if there's nobody for the plan. 
Right. Thank you. Thanks for pointing the projects out. Uh, I'm going to go through the committee now and, and just let uh, my colleagues uh, uh, get in on this conversation. Uh, start off with uh, Mrs. Fitzpatrick. Um, I have mixed feelings about what should be done because originally I did look into um, a building that was restored in Camden on the Camden waterfront. Um, I do see a lot of kayakers and canoes because I live right on the Rancocas Creek. So even though the current is strong out there, it is totally utilized um, by them more and more each summer. I see more. So I have mixed feelings. I am very appreciative of the remarks that were made tonight. There were some great ideas that um, I would like to think about. But all in all, in order for us to stabilize the building until we decide what we're going to do, I don't know if we should put out those funds unless they were granted funds. Um, but I know we have budgeted monies to demolish it. Um, so at this point, I, I'm not sure how I feel because all of these comments, I, I especially like the idea of a park in that area. It would enhance the property values uh, and the heritage site where we would actually have the signage that Peter had recommended um, would be a nice beginning to for the town to acknowledge all these different historic sites that we have here. And I'd like to say my grandfather worked in that shoe factory at one time, and I have a pair of children's shoes that were my dad's that actually came from there. So there is history there, and I, I appreciate that. Um, so I'm mixed. I have mixed emotions, right? I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure. I want to hear what the other committee members uh, feel as well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown. Good evening, everybody. Uh, great comments from everybody. We have been uh, talking about this for some time. Um, and trust me, folks, you've got five good people putting their heads together on this, plus our administration. Um, a lot has been considered already. When the new flood came out, um, that is a flood zone. Uh, so that is something to consider. Another consideration is uh, anything for a municipality, everything has to be to include state statute, uh, handicap accessibility, uh, elevator. You know, you have to be eight or 10 feet off the ground. So that means an elevator just to get to the first floor. And whatever cost that we looked at to, to make the building habitable, nothing ever no. comes in the first budget. You know, you're talking um, uh, multi-millions. Multi and, you know, for, we only have, I think, don't hold me to, I mean, there's only 1,300 homes taxable. You, does everybody want to, you know, chip in a million dollars for a building that most towns, these uh, community centers don't, okay? So that building fell into disrepair for the ownership. And now we're taking responsibility to, um, to get rid of it. Get rid of it. Power trap. There's, it's all wood. If it was a stone, uh, perhaps it would be a different story. But this is a big wood box. And um, I think I think down there needs a And especially you would have two vistas of both bridges. You would have, um, you, you would have the uh, train bridge. Bridge, and you know, as far as us rushing in decisions to see kayaks, canoes, there there are state professionals and our engineer and our planner. I don't think we would just let anybody take a boat out there until we knew of the safety. And then there's the insurance that we carry. Um, you know, our Jeff. There were, I know there were some members of this board that wanted to open up Union Avenue again. And it didn't take long before we got shut down by our insurance carrier, and they had good information to convince me that it really shouldn't be open because it's just not uh, ready or safe. So, uh, you know, and I just want to make one one comment to the uh, the gal who commented about the school and the taxes, you know, that we lost uh, 
$10,000 in revenue, blah, blah, blah. This committee has done quite a bit in the past 20 years since I've been on here, building an economic base, which is offsetting um, you know, expenses Okay, to the schools. We have a new housing development on Cooperstown Road that is not part of a pilot program. We have warehousing going up that's not part of a pilot program. Listen, we have offset that loss tenfold. So uh, we are looking out for your dollars. And uh, other than that, I don't think anybody's making a rough decision, but we do have to make a decision while I'm still on committee um, to, to demolish the building. That's the smart thing to do. And uh, we, you know, the, the towns that other folks have mentioned, Camden, Medford, um, they got a whole lot more tax rateables than we do. We're a small town. We can't afford, you know, to, to take on that project. And the historic trust fund, preservation trust fund, I, I don't know anybody ever got any money out of that. So we could raise your open space tax and uh, put, you know, put, put it toward historic preservation trust, but I don't think anybody's going to want to do that. So that's, that's my five cents. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, John. Uh, part of your, your comments at the beginning were broken up, and, and uh, I, th I think you were talking about the being a public building, you would have to comply with ADA requirements, and as you mentioned, it's in the floodplain and a larger floodplain given the, the latest uh, FEMA maps that came out, and so that's elevating whatever you do build and so forth. Uh, I think that's, they were a couple of your main points. So your, the, your audio was kind of garbled there for a bit, so I just want the Yes, that was okay. Uh, let's see, um, Miss Holland. Hey, um, yeah. So I, I've appreciated hearing all of the ideas that were um, kicked around by our residents. Um, a lot of good ones. I loved Shirley's idea of the walking path and um, Bill's plan or idea of having a bike rental place. I don't think it necessarily needs to be in the huge canvas factory, but a little, a little building on that site um, for that purpose would be a dream down the road. Um, you know, as a, as a taxpayer, I don't want to hemorrhage money, you know, as a stopgap on the way to ultimate demolition of, of kind of bolstering the building just long enough to get us to another decision point where we ultimately decide to tear it down. Um, as an elected official, I think we've spent a solid year now discussing pros and cons here and and bringing it up as discussion points where people were among the committee and our administration looking for those grants that people um, just inquired about. Um, I think we've exhausted that road at this point and it, it is a decision point, a decision time now. And, and personally, I'm in favor of demoing the, the building and, and one day having a nice creek front area to uh, relax on a, on a park bench, you know, maybe during your travel between Pennington and Amico, you know, it's a perfect location and it's a beautiful little part of our neighborhood that does deserve something, something nice to call their own. So that's my position. It's always sad to lose a historic building. I personally spent my youth you know, digging around in abandoned buildings throughout Bucks County. And, you know, now as an adult and an elected official, I see the liability there. So we really we can't act or we can't uh, fail to act at this point. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ross. Yes, uh, I appreciate the comments that were shared this evening. Uh, you know, looking at it from a historical uh, building, uh, there's value there in the uh, acknowledging the industry and uh, the impact that it had on our community. But I think we can do that uh, by dedicating uh, the property uh, through utilizing it as a park or uh, again, uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick uh, said about the canoes and the kayaks. And yes, I also live on the Rancocas and have seen 
a lot more activity uh, over the years of kayaks and canoes out front. Uh, matter of fact, there's an annual uh, event that happens where I think they uh, launch up near uh, the Route 130 bridge and come down as a group, uh, almost uh, tubing and just having a good time in the creek and uh, it's uh, well organized and you know there are power boats nearby for on the safety piece. Uh, but going back to the property, uh, to invest additional dollars, uh, and we're talking millions of dollars to refurbish that building, and then being able to, or having to uh, afford to uh, the expense of maintaining those buildings uh, after they're renovated, uh, just to me becomes a large tax burden on the community that we can't afford. Uh, it's nice to think about and wish we could do, or, uh, but in my opinion, uh, we don't have those type of dollars. Uh, so I'm still in favor of demolishing the building, uh, looking at it from a park standpoint. Uh, maybe we end up putting up uh, a building similar to what we have at uh, Gateway Park. Uh, we have some restrooms and a picnic, uh, a picnic area there. Uh, you know, again, park benches along the waterfront. Uh, and it was mentioned about the train bridge and uh, the uh, car bridge that goes between Riverside and Delanco. You know, uh, th there's a lot to be said about just being able to take in, sit on a park bench, looking at the water and taking in the surroundings. I also think that it'll enhance the uh, neighborhood by taking that building down. Uh, Buttonwood, those houses probably hadn't seen the morning sunrise in the, what, over 150 years uh, because of that building being there. Uh, so it's gonna change the uh, look of the neighborhood, the feel of the neighborhood and uh, I think we do our homework uh, as far as going down the avenue of having it as a park. Uh, and again, uh, with in my uh, opinion, hoping that we would be able to safely provide uh, water access for canoes and kayaks. Uh, one lady brought up about swimming that could encourage swimming. Yes, that's a dangerous thing, and you know that would have to be addressed also, but. Uh, again, as far as the building itself and the property, I think take down the building uh, and definitely put uh, markers there, uh, similar to what I think it's, it's either Palmyra uh, Palmar or Riverton along their waterfront. They've got these beautiful plaques laid out there with history, uh, you know, spelled out about the uh, the houses or the mansions that are down there on their waterfront and, and they tell a nice story. Uh, so I, doing something like that and again dedicating uh, the park or that property and giving it recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Good, uh, excellent comments. Um, yeah, uh, when you, when you, Faced with uh, or you see a building, uh, an old building come down, or, or uh, uh, you know, a, a small piece of a community is obviously lost. Uh, whether it's a, the, a small, uh, you know, the wood frame buildings that were out on Cooper Street there before the the uh, Savannah, uh, Savannah Muse or Delanco Crossing uh, uh, project went in there. Um, uh, and, and that's why you need a, a good history board like we have that can uh, uh, capture that and, and retain it and document it uh, accurately. Um, I've been a member, my wife and I have been a member of the National Trust of Historic Preservation for, for many years. And, you know, we take our road trips and, you know, we don't get too far. Every, every brown sign for an old historic house, we pull over and look at it and talk to the people and, and, uh, we do a lot of the holiday home tours in various towns uh, 
across New Jersey and southeastern Pennsylvania. And uh, we love the older homes and talking with people and the travails that they go through and that we go through, many of us in town with older homes on the, uh, fixing them up and maintaining them and things like that. Um, and so uh, like I said, visiting some of those larger historic properties, uh, I have a small taste or a small understanding of just the extraordinary costs that are involved in that. Um, uh, this building, uh, as, as uh, Bill Matalevich said, and Peter alluded to, is one of the last uh, remaining along the Rancocas and the last uh, uh, that, that uh, is, is uh, an indicator of what, what was here. Um, but uh, as, as we've gone through the documentation and various reports uh, that uh, we've talked about this evening, uh, it's just uh, some costs there, some expenses uh, that uh, this is just too big, uh, uh, too big an animal to, 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 try to, to try to save. It's got, uh, I've been in the building several times uh, after acquisition and since then, uh, I, I called in a favor to, from a, an acquaintance uh, from a couple of years ago and had a preservation architect come out and walk through the building. And uh, even though they were very reluctant to offer uh, an estimate, uh, uh, finally was able to cost, uh, coax a number out that was in the order of four to $5 million to bring it up uh, to uh, fully restore the, the, the campus shop or the, or the shoe factory. So um, I think uh, bringing the building down demo is, uh, is, is the prudent thing to do for this community. And uh, we've heard a lot of good ideas on, especially more importantly from, from that neighborhood, uh, uh, some of the, uh, the things that they would like to see and some of the things that they're, they're, they're apprehensive about. Uh, and so we do not want to create an additional nuisance there. So we want to um, be very careful as we go forward here. So, uh, Mrs. Laura, in the chat, are there any comments on something different that we have not heard uh, yet? Otherwise, I'd like to close out the, this uh, public session on this topic. There are a few more um, posts in the chat section from people, um, some repeating it's more like they've been going back and forth with their comments to one another. Um, uh, New Anything would, would be uh, Joanne Swinlin uh, would like to see uh, basically that our history not be destroyed and that um, the property um, be uh, maintained for its history. Um, so basically it's just been chats back and forth between people, okay. not specifically addressing the township committee okay. or asking questions specific to township committee. Um, um, my comment, I'm sorry, did address the township committee. Which one, Alyssa? Um, oh it just, parks are lovely, that one? Yeah, at the bottom there was a question. Okay. So, um, Alyssa De La Pena, um, has anyone reached out to other local towns on how they come up with funding to save their historic structures or make improvements to the town? I also have a comment. Um, for the committee in the chat. Is your echoing? Um, do you have another device near you that's logged in? Yeah. yeah. Okay, one of them will have to be muted so that you're not, it's hard to hear you. <laughs> and, and Liz has, has posted that if the building does come down, perhaps a part of it uh, as an outline of the foundation or some part of the walls could be preserved um, or incorporated into the park. That she's seen beautiful gardens within the walls of old buildings in the UK. Uh, I think something like this would, would add to the character of a future of the future park. Uh, Amber Perlmutter just, Perlmutter just posted, it is concerning that the Township Committee is in favor of a park in this location when Gateway Park progression is on hold um, due to, I believe, uh, she believes the budget issues. Um, I'd like to make a comment about Gateway Park, the additional park there. Um, it is our intention to apply for a grant for that in the next round of the Burlington County um, 
uh, board has their uh, municipal grants, uh, Recreation was considering Gateway Park to um, actually get some grant money from them. They've been very generous to the Michael Township. Right. As far as funding from, uh, you know, we, uh, I know I've looked at uh, other projects in other towns and in other states, uh, and uh, you kind of end up, you know, looking elsewhere, and it all kind of comes back to the same place, whether it's uh, uh, some kind of historic, uh, uh, a state historic uh, uh, preservation grant or brownfields uh, EPA uh, or DEP funding. And uh, these are all the things that we've, uh, we've looked at and, and attended uh, seminars on and so forth. So uh, it's no secret a bag of money that uh, other towns get access to and, and we haven't you know, found yet. We've been knocking on, on all those doors and doing those searches as well. So uh, Mr. Schwab, do you have anything to add to the conversation or something that you've that we've missed in the last hour. Otherwise, uh, I'd like to, uh, to move on here. I saw a head shake, so I guess that was it. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button here. No, I think you guys covered every possible thing you could cover. Thank you very much for the input. All right, uh, Mrs. Lohr, Mrs. Martin, from your perspective, and again, the three of you, thank you for, and Mr. Fox, uh, for all the good work compiling all that stuff uh, and uh, getting it together and posting it and informing our community. So great work, thank you all. Does the committee want to? Um... Mayor? Yes, go ahead, Fern. We had one person from the uh, public uh, Mr. Taroshki, uh, from the, I guess, uh, who's on, on a couple of our boards here in town. Uh, he's been raising his hand. Thank, thank you, Mr. Ouellette. Mayor Templeton, if I may, I'd like to say that uh, in honoring the history of this building, Peter Fritz has done a marvelous, marvelous job. I've read the reports that were attached to the uh, the Lanco uh, discussion site and his pictures preserve it better than anything that can be done financially reliably fiscally appropriate to preserve that building and therefore that building should come down it is a safety hazard. We shouldn't even pay any more money just to preserve it temporarily. And uh, by you could either sell the property to a developer for residential purposes or the park that's being discussed and uh, Mr. Fritz's pictures and whatnot can become part of that park to preserve the history in a safe and financially secure manner. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. I thought you were just swatting a fly there, so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and with that uh, closure, uh, does the committee want to um, take any action on this at this time? Um, Ms. Fitzpatrick, have you arrived at a at a solution, a decision? It, it looks like the majority, it looks like all four members of the committee want to demolish. So I guess we should, does somebody want to do a motion? Is that what we're deciding? No, I, I just came back to you since you were undecided previously. I, I, I'm not sure. I want to, you know, I listen to everyone. I believe we should demolish it. I don't think we should put any more cost in it. I think the park idea is excellent to enhance the neighborhood. Um, um, benches, picnic table. 
Maybe the women's club would even put a gazebo down there like they did at Gateway Park. Um, but I mean, I, I don't know about spending money to stabilize it because unless we were to sell it as is because it's not a building, even though it has all this historic information, Peter has documented that so accurately that um, I think it would open up the neighborhood and I think it would be uh, just a beautiful place for the neighbors to enjoy their waterfront. So I, I, I have, I'm in favor of demolishing it if that's what the rest of the committee is in favor of doing. Yeah, you, you can decide to put the resolution authorizing the engineering thing on your September 27th agenda as, or you can make a motion to approve it tonight. I'll make a motion to move forward with demolition. I think, I think we're on the same page here. We have what we want, but we have to look at the practical aspects of it. Right now, I, I think that needs to come down first so we can move forward. There's a motion. Is that what I understand? A motion. Um, Ms. Holland has made a motion to prepare uh, engineering specifications for demolition of the uh, shoe factory, Ridgeway Shoe Factory canvas shop. Um, which, would, which would include accepting the engineer's proposal. Janice has that resolution prepared for next meeting or this meeting, whichever. Well, I was going to um, ask um, yes. Tom Coleman if. Um, if they move to, to dem demolish, we can do the formal resolution on the 27th, memorialize it with the formal resolution on the 27th. And that is to um, award the um, contract for demolition uh, specs and uh, to the uh, engineering, to the, to the engineer. Jess, yeah, it, it, unless you have um, a prepared resolution in front of you right now, I'm, I'm I, I've been in too many meetings where it's on the fly, um, but perhaps, um, yeah, the straw vote taken by the, the committee this evening, maybe you on properly memorialize this on the 27th so all of the details are not missed. So you can basically do this twice? Uh, Voting this twice? Uh, Mayor, you could, you could do this this evening. I, I think we have all the pertinent details that could go could go into the resolution. Um, I think they're all um, you know, e easily be captured and we could send over to Janice in the morning uh, a resolution memorializing the action taken this evening. And if you're gonna do that, I just ask that you um, amend the agenda um, to add this resolution um, and we can move forward. Or you can punt to the 27th and, and vote formally. <laughs> I mean, if you if you do the resolution, we assign a number of 2021-118, which would be done now, but and separate from your consent agenda. If you're ready to do that, um, awarding that uh, professional <laughs> services contract for demolition um, to the engineer to ERI environmental yeah. resolution. Yes, I believe I, I believe there is a draft resolution that you had in your folder. <sighs> yeah. In I do apologize. It's, I'm just back from vacation today, so I'm just getting re. Uh, I, believe is, I believe that a draft resolution was prepared and it is in yeah. the folder. Wasn't quite sure. Give me a minute. Well, Janice is looking for that. Yep. I have it. It's um, it would be resolution authorizing professional services, demolition engineering services, um, for 200 Ash Street. And it would be uh, awarding that to uh, Environmental Resolutions and Christopher J. Knoll, PE, um, in the amount not to exceed $7,450. So if you're ready to award that professional services contract uh, for demolition engineering, you can do that tonight under resolution 2020-1- What was the next resolution? Did I say 118 is the next resolution number? I thought you said 28. 118. 118. Oh, 118. 118. Yeah. And um, uh, Christine made a motion on this, and I'll second that motion. Okay. Let me just. There's a motion on the floor. Okay. Let me just jot some things down here. Are we all good with this, Mr. Coleman? Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right.
There's a motion by Ms. Holland, second by Mr. Brown. Mayor, would you like a roll call? Please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olet. Yes. Mr. Templeton. With regrets, yes. Okay. And uh, thank you, uh, the public that participated in this. Uh, excellent comments. Uh, a lot of uh, just, just a lot of different things uh, were highlighted, and it's uh, certainly going into our our. our our kit bag of, of, of thoughts going forward, but uh, really pre appreciate the, uh, everyone taking the time to look at uh, all the information, read, read through it, understand it. And uh, uh, thank you again to Mr. Fritz and the history board for uh, uh, basically keeping this forever. So thank you. Uh, let's see. Guess what? We have a public comment statement. Public comment statement. The purpose of the public comment sessions is to allow residents to share information and their views with the Lanco Township Committee. Since the committee may be hearing the information for the first time, it is not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. Uh, report of advanced remote meeting com comments and questions. This section is to acknowledge and read those comments and questions received by the municipal clerk in advance of the remote meeting via either via electronic email or written letter as required by NJAC 5 colon 39-1 as the quitter. Members of the public participating live in this meeting will be given the opportunity for comments and questions during the meeting in one or both public comment sessions. This is uh, session one. Uh, meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions. Session one, any topic other than the canvas shop, shoe factory. And Mayor, for the record, I did not receive any uh, advanced comments, but being on vacation, I'll uh, check with the uh, deputy municipal clerk, Kitty Martin, to see if she had received anything in advance while I was on vacation. Uh, no, I did not. Okay. Thank you. Uh, public comments. Uh, yeah, make a quick uh, comment. Uh, Peter Fritz, uh, 303 Union Avenue. Uh, and now that this decision has been made, I just wanted to respectfully suggest that this um, be uh, that we consider naming opportunity to uh, name this Ridgeway Park uh, in, in honor of Andrus Ridgeway, who was very generous to this community in his lifetime, uh, uh, and uh, for his vision for for putting his business here and for the economic development that the Ridgeway Shoe Factory uh, provided to this town for. Uh, 50 years. I think it'd be appropriate to, to name the park after uh, Mr. Ridgeway and his business. Thank you. Excellent, excellent idea. Any other comments? Uh, Any comments in the chat, Mrs. Lohr? Not in, during this uh, open session, Mayor. And seeing no hands raised or comments, I'll close this session, this public comment session one. There is a second one at the end of the meeting if someone thinks of something in that time. Comments and reports, uh, professionals. Uh, Mr. Coleman, do you have anything that you've been uh, passed from Mr. Heinold? Mayor, thank you for having me this evening. Um, uh, in the interest of time, um, I will defer uh, any comments uh, for what Doug brought me up to speed on the uh, uh, agenda items. So nothing at this time, correct? Oh, nothing at this time, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fox. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll try and be brief. Um, on the agenda tonight is a uh, change order for the 2020 road program. Um, that's the final change order and final voucher to the contractor. Um, the project finished out at uh, a little over $900 over budget, um, which is actually pretty good because there is, um, in, in contracts, you have to have a, a fuel adjustment uh, clause in your contracts. And when the contractor bids on the project, if the gasoline prices go up, he automatically gets more money. There was actually about a $5,000 increase 
do a few, do, do a few fuel costs. Um, so we were able to get the project down to only over $900 above the award of amount. Which, which resolution is that, Harry? That is... Eleven. One seventeen. One seventeen. Okay. Yeah. Seventeen. Yeah. Right. You should have all the paperwork there. Uh, Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the twenty twenty one road program. Uh, the contractor did start on that. Um, as probably most of you know, if not all of you know. Um, they started on Third Street. They're they're working on concrete work now. Uh, to, uh, Wednesday, they're going to be paving the public works driveway. Uh, that should that'll probably take uh, two days to, to, to pave that. Uh, we have coordinated with John Fenimore with that to make sure that you know it, it, it all works out with his schedule. Um, they'll be back working on the concrete work the rest of this week and into into next week. Once the concrete work is done, then they're going to come back and pave all of Second, uh, Rivers Edge, and Third Street. Um, for the private developments, the AC Power site, the uh, solar project, that is complete. So once uh, I'm, I'm going to contact uh, Taylor Design Group to make sure that they're okay with it. We can then release their their bond, but that wouldn't be till the next meeting. Um, the work is complete out there. The Robbins Lane ditch that has been completed. Uh, if you recall, you awarded that to Thor Construction. Um, I believe John's very happy with it, and and that has been completed, and that can be closed out. The uh, on the agenda, we also have an easement. Um, for the Poplar and Manicoka Street um, drainage pipe. I can talk about that now or we can wait for that ordinance to come up and I can explain the, the situation for that at that time. Yeah, that's on the consent agenda. So, uh, Mayor, I don't know if you want them to explain it now or wait until your consent agenda. Let's, let's, okay. let's talk about it since it is bundled in the consent. Okay. Um, and I believe the, the uh, homeowner's sons may be on, on line here. Um, if they have any questions, um, feel free to, to bring that up at this time, if that's okay with you, Mayor, if they could chime in if they need to. Okay. Um, what, what we have is there's the uh, drainage pipe, the 30 inch drainage pipe that runs from Poplar out to the Mancocus Creek, it's the corner of Poplar and Mancocus. Uh, that pipe needs a check valve on it uh, to stop the stormwater from high tide coming up into the, to the drainage system, which actually is one of the one of the issues with flooding on Hickory Street. Um, in addition to that, yes, there it is. Um, there is no we we could not find in any of the deeds a record of an easement for this pipe that's running through, it's running right next to uh, Mr. McQuaid's house. It's about, I'm going to say, six feet off of his house foundation. Um, so with that being said, uh, I contacted Doug and, and, and Richard. And we, on the agenda tonight is authorization to prepare the easement. I spoke with the, the ordinance the number owner. 20. Thank you, Richard. Ordinance um, number 20. Okay. The, the, the owner of the property is, is, is an elderly gentleman. Um, the person that lives there is his son. Uh, I spoke with him. I spoke with his sister. Um, I believe the property is actually in a trust. And they are all uh, okay with us getting the easement to do the work. There's two parts to the easement. First, we would just do a construction easement, which what we need to do at this point is install the gate valve at the end, where, where the outflow is of the creek, and about 10 to 15 feet of pipe. And that will all, all we have to do at this point. And for that, we can just do a temporary construction easement. It's basically a document saying that we can go onto the property and do the work. To follow up with that, we would, we're looking for a permanent easement so we don't have to go through this each time we need to adjust this pipe. Um, 
so that's that's where that stands at this point. Um, once I explain to the owners that this ordinance is first reading, uh, there has to be a second meeting before it's actually approved. So they will have input and we will be providing them with documents before the next meeting. Harry, on the, uh, you said 15 feet of pipe to be replaced. How close does that end up being to their house and house foundation? That's uh, a good 25 feet from the house, the section that we're, we're, we're replacing. And the pipe is in, as far as you know, good condition that's closest to the house as it runs by there, or is that going to need work? We actually don't know. That's one of the problems. Um, we couldn't get a camera up into the pipe. Uh, there's there's some type of blockage up in there that, that we couldn't get. So when we pull this last section of pipe out, we'll be able to look into the pipe and get into the pipe and see what what condition it actually is. It's an old corrugated pipe, so I'm going to say it's not going to be in great condition just by the age and the type of pipe. Uh, but there's no evidence of any failures at this time on the property. There's no sinkholes or, or any, issue, any 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 evidence of a failure of the pipe other than clock blockage. Um, I guess, uh, Mr. McQuaid, are you, are you on this meeting? Would you like to speak on this? Who are you asking for? Uh, Mr. McQuaid, he's the, uh, the owner's son, the person, the gentleman that lives at the house. I thought they were going to be on the meeting, but. Just say so you no, know, the public hearing is scheduled for October 4th. The ordinance is enough, so not for the 27th but not till the uh, October 4th. Right, the October 4th meeting is the second meeting? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. And, and I'll be working with Doug and, and Tom in the meantime on, on the actual wording of the easements and things like that. Right. Uh, the Zibrook Seawall. Uh, we do have a meeting set up for the 24th. Um, thanks to the mayor. Um, we're going to be meeting with DEP and, and their staff and we'll see how that goes. Uh, we, we have, we have no idea whatever what DEP is going to say. So, um, but we'll know something after 24. And, uh, that's, that's all I have at the time. And, uh, Harry, uh, Mr. Fox, I'd like to thank you and, uh, and Bill Milevich from Shade Tree for the quick response after, uh, on the third street, we had, uh, a couple of trees come down in the storm and uh, brushed by a house and hopefully minimal damage. But uh, uh, we did a walk walk through a couple of days later as far as uh, scouting ahead on the, the upcoming work there on Third Street. So appreciate the quick response from your company and, and from Mr. Madelovich from Shade Tree to uh, kind of uh, look at what was upcoming to avoid any further uh, uh, loss of trees or, or potential uh, additional issues so thank you yeah, yeah you're welcome and that was very helpful i would like to thank bill as well for for meeting us out there and so we can we're on the same page okay the, the only other thing here i thought you're going to report on cooperstown road and the county work ah. as it relates to our sidewalks and the cdbg grant and all of that okay thank you Richard. miscommunication yep um yes as you know we uh received a grant from from green development the block grant program um, to replace the sidewalk on Cooper Street from Hickory to Pennsylvania. Um, we also have in the plans from, from Township Funds to replace the sidewalk in front of Town Hall and Public Works. Um, the county came out and marked it out and was, were, were, they were starting to do work. I happened to be driving through the town. Um, never what? notified us. Never, never notified anyone from the township that I know of until we received the facts um, that I believe Kitty sent to me indicating that the contractor was going to be doing some work out there. Um, what they are doing is they're pa repaving all of Cooperstown from Route 130 to Burlington Avenue. It's a mill and overlay program. Um, but with that, whenever you repair a street or improve a street that's, that, that's adjacent to a handicap ramp, you have to, to fix those ramps, make them in, in compliance. So they are anywhere, any place that there's a ramp, existing ramp, they're replacing those ADA ramp, make sure they're compliant, they're compliant. They have finished that work. Um, 
I still have not gotten a set of plans from the county, but I did get a copy from the contractor. I took photographs of it. So I do have photographs of the plan. Um, and again, they're just proposing to put in the, the uh, handicap ramps and they are changing some grades on the first block from the railroad track towards Burlington Avenue to there's one low area that they are changing. So they are reconstructing the road at that one point. I looked at the grades and it, that all appears that it'll work and it will all work with our future installation of the sidewalk. Uh, so but wasn't the good thing your, about all this is we got free handicap ramps. Yeah, but wasn't your plans to redo the grades between Hickory and Pennsylvania to avoid uh, future water going from the street over what we'll put in our new sidewalks and new yes, drainage? That was, yes, that we are. We're going. We're still going to install drainage. Um, and what they did there will not affect what, what my plan is. So I have to dig up, there will be some digging up of newly milled and paved road though. No, no, the drainage will be in the grass area between the sidewalk and okay. the roadway. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So the, the two are not going to be in conflict at this point in time, as far as we know. Correct. Okay. So Harry, their grading will help improve the area where it floods? Not, not really, because it still runs down over the sidewalk and floods out those, that sidewalk area. Um, it'll improve on their roadway where there's a, a, a little low spot in the ponds. Um, let's say right, right down from Pennsylvania Avenue, maybe 100 feet down, not even that, 50 feet down from Pennsylvania Avenue. There's a low point that they're going to fix. So, so their road will drain better, but it's not going to help our drainage at all. Okay. Uh, when we do our okay. sidewalk project, I'm going to put in drainage in the grass strip area. So the water from the yards and from the road will go into the drainage uh, system uh, and, and it'll stop the, the flooding at that point right there. Good. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I tried to get something out of them as well for this, but they don't budge. Because last year they told you they were planning on doing something. So we were going to coordinate with them. They decided they weren't going to do it and they went ahead and did it anyhow. That's correct. Without telling us. That's correct. Okay. Do we have you sent them uh, your your draft conception of the sidewalk up to the county just to kind of say, hey, we're thinking of doing this? I I have not. I discussed it with them verbally um, with our engineer, what we want to do, but we just finished up the survey work actually this week yeah um or last week i'm sorry so i don't have anything on paper but i did discuss, discuss it with them verbally and they and they are on board with the concept and and how we're going to do it yeah just uh, uh yeah we're annoyed at the, that they didn't tell us or give us any clue that you know they were coming here but uh we should at least let them know what we've got going well absolutely and we also have to get permits from them which they're going to charge us fees and yeah it's a long process to get permits from, from the county. All right. Also, have you uh, handled a communication with the Planning Association about the restoration for the headwall work? Yes, I, I have to get back to them. The um, Thor did um, top sow and seed out there. So I'm, I have to get, get a hold of them and see if they're okay with that restoration work that we did. Yeah, make sure they know because they keep writing either the county or me and saying, hey, how come things aren't fixed? And you're the one who has the answers. So you need to sp speak to them directly. Yeah, and I think I'm going to have to meet him out there because there, and I also have to talk to the county and find out who's responsible for, for what section. Okay. So I, I will I leave that to you to take care of this week if you could. I will. You won't get any more emails. Okay. Thank you. Harry, how about the end caps on the uh, seawalls at the end of the streets? Are they completed yet? They are not. So it looks we have like not they paid are. the contractor his final payment, which is thousands of dollars. A lot of money. Um, well, can we can can we get someone else to complete the project and pay out of those funds? How can we get that done? We, we can. We're, yeah, I mean the cost is is very minimal. It's just getting him to do it. So I I will get someone to do it. I was actually to be perfectly honest with you, just going to go out and pop them on myself. Yeah. Okay. That needs to be done. That's been waiting for almost a year. Mm. Yeah. What's yeah. also interesting that contract is not closed off 
No. We haven't accepted the, the project, have made the final payment, don't have the maintenance bond. And there's two dead trees. Yeah. All right. It's right. going so good. And... Anything else, Harry? That's all I have. All right. Thank you. I see we now have two solicitors uh, here tonight. So, uh, <laughs> we... Mayor, the A team has arrived. Uh... <laughs> the younger. Yeah, you're probably going to have to. Uh, you're right. Younger. Some sort of baton ritual to make this official here. Younger and more handsome. Um, Golden Quill. Mayor, I'm going to defer to Doug and let Doug take over from this point. All right. Mr. Coleman was quite uh, patient to uh, listen to our uh, hour and a half uh, discussion of the uh, shoe factory. Thank so, you, Tom. I, I owe you lunch. Yes, you do. <laughs> and then he'll brief you during lunch of everything that you missed. <laughs> All the points. Thanks. All right. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. All right. Uh, continuing on, uh, Township Administrator, Mr. Schwab. The uh, couple items uh, to mention, I think I sent you an email that we switched our life insurance uh, company for our employees. Uh, the current one asked for a big, huge increase for renewal. So we, our uh, broker found another high-end company who for the same price would do it plus give some extra benefits. So uh, that's been taken care of. The other thing I will be sending you shortly is uh, trash collection. We had our trash collection meeting with the uh, new uh, company that has not been able to pick up on time for the last 15 weeks and spent an hour or so uh, going over things with them. I'll be uh, sending you my uh, summary. But the bottom line is that uh, he expects to be on regular schedule by the week leading up to Labor Day. I don't know if that happened last week. He promised to contact each town beginning each day at 8 a.m. and late in the afternoon from 3.30, buys a status. And uh, he was, said he would try to make things work. And we said, don't try, be realistic. Uh, he also acknowledged that uh, we have a right to deduct $1,500 a week from his invoice for failing to complete the work. If we went retroactively, it'd be over $22,000. We certainly indicated that in the month of September, if he cannot keep up with the schedule, uh, he risks having that happen so that if they aren't, I will be notifying you and I'll talk to Doug about formally notifying him to reduce his uh, September invoice, either in whole or in part. And he understands, he said he understood and would accept it, but he said he was more concerned with the fact that he's providing bad service. He said, if he doesn't feel he can fix the problems, he would agree to part ways. So he has all these great ideas to fix the problem, but uh, if he can't, then we have to seriously consider whether we can continue with him. Uh, although the alternatives as T even knows are not so good. So that's what's going on. You'll get this uh, in the, probably tomorrow or Wednesday, the um, multi-page detail report. Okay, any questions on, on that at this point in time? Okay. And then the last thing is that uh, if you remember a year or more ago, you authorized us to try to sell a little tiny lot behind the 7-Eleven uh, area mm -hmm. that uh, somehow we acquired many, many years ago and we have to cut the grass and maintain it and so on. We thought we were allowed to sell it to any adjacent property owner. I was in negotiation with the two primary potential buyers who could actually add it to their lots and put pools or garages or whatever, or have a nice big yard. And thought that there was gonna be a, a bid. We had the bids come in on September 2nd and none of them bid, neither of them bid. And even though I had multiple emails with them prior to me sending out the bid, I've not heard from them since. So in communication with Doug, I guess right now we just leave it alone. Uh, nothing has changed after all that. And if they have an interest, we'll hear from them. If not, I'll come back and talk to you guys at a later date about whether there's any alternatives. Uh, you can do individual negotiations at this point in time, but right now I'm just reporting that we got no bids and we'll, recommendation is that we let sleeping dogs lie at the moment. Hmm. If anyone's got any comments or questions or knows any of the people and wants to deal with it, we're all ears. Did and they get uh, a copy of yeah. the bid directly, Richard? Do they get a copy of the bid or they, is it just published? 
No, no, they got. I mailed it directly to them. Oh, okay. Both okay. by email and by regular mail. Okay. And I, I let them know, you know, a month earlier that this was coming, and gave them plenty of time because they had to come up with money, and right. you know, decide cash issues and so on. So we gave them plenty of time, and surprisingly, uh, we didn't hear from them. And more surprisingly, I haven't even heard since when I've emailed them several times. Say, you know, what happened? Did you miss something? Might have been a technical issue. Did something miss in the mail? Did you not get it? So I'm not sure what's going to happen there. But that's all I have. The other thing, I will not be at your meeting next uh, on the 27th, but I'm sure things will be fine. You don't have a big agenda that night anyway. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, department heads, uh, Mr. Fenimore out there? I haven't yes, seen I am. Oh, there oh, you go. Can you hear me, Mayor? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, we're, we're pretty waterlogged, I can tell you that. All the rain we've been getting. Um, we had to put, we had to purchase some stone for um, some of the washouts that we had, especially uh, up at the compost site, the hill going up the end of uh, Kansas Avenue and uh, down by Vine Street. Uh, the dirt road back there got pretty well uh, washed out and big holes, so we, we filled that in real good. Um, we've been picking brush up. Uh, we've picked up 75 cubic yards of chipped up brush. Uh, we've cut all township properties uh, four times, but in reality, it's probably been eight times because most of the fields we had to double cut because they were so thick and high. Um, we removed seven trees from the storms, the past couple storms that we had. Um, nothing, you know, really big. Uh, that, that was the help. Uh, trying to keep up on the storm drains uh, was quite a feat. Uh, we had uh, some uh, issues of uh, flooding out on Delaware Avenue between uh, uh, Cedar and Willow. Uh, all the debris from the river came up there, came up onto the boat ramp, and then at the end of uh, Glitter's Gulch, down at the end of Magnolia, uh, we had quite a bit of debris. So what I did is I had to rent a dumpster and uh, we made five dump truck loads of debris and trash. Um, the ditch, uh, the Perkins Lane, um, got cut last week. Uh, that's been done. So, uh, Richard, you can send them a bill on that. Please uh, send uh, your information to Beverly, please. Okay. Um, we're going to be trying to rent uh, a screening machine. It's supposed to come in this week. Hopefully, uh, it's supposed to rain at the end of the week, so I don't know what's going to go up on that. Uh, but we're going to have to try to um, screen the compost so we're able to get rid of it because we're finding out that the compost has a lot of trash in it and nobody will take it. Um, also, we had uh, I had <clears throat> the county come in and finally clean the ditch out at the end of Beverly, uh, the ditch that goes from West Avenue down through Beverly. They finally came in and opened that ditch up, so that should help uh, um, keeping that area um, less uh, saturated with water. I also talked to uh, talked to the county about the, <clears throat> the issue that we, there was two issues that we have. One at the Cooperstown and Cooper Street Railroad Crossing. Um, when we had all this flooding out, I noticed that the water was flowing out of the storm drain basin that is on the Cooperstown roadside and was draining down along the railroad tracks, which that should have never done. So apparently the draining ditch at Hortons uh, is not right. And I talked to Mr. Fox about it and we're going to try to set something up and uh, have to go down there and take a look at it and find out what happened. Also, I talked to the county about um, 
who owns the property um, across in Riverside where we get flooding out all the time? Because it seems like every time it floods out, the Lanco gets called to go put, you know, the barricades out. And it's just, you know, all these years, um, we've, we spent a lot of money, you know, bringing somebody in to get the signage down there. So uh, the, the county guy's looking into that and putting one of those duck bills um, on the, um, I guess, the creek um, wall there. Um, that would be the best place to do it, and hopefully uh, that might help a little bit. I mean, because it's not that much flooding out that uh, it always gets, but, I mean, uh, it backs up through the drainage system, and, you know, everybody kind of, like, ignores it. And I don't know if it's the Bridge Commission or the county, but I talked to the county. He said that might be their storm drain, so he's going to look into it and see what he can do on that. Um, we also, over the weekend, I had the guys come in. Uh, we've had a lot of brush put out, I guess, from the storm and people were putting out. Uh, this is the last month for brush, so I was trying to make a, a good trip around and get people to, you know, they have any brush to get everything out, and uh, we can, you know, move on. I have a lot of tree removal that i got to get to. I'm going to be putting out a list to get tree work done. And that's all for now. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah, and, thank you, John. And your staff. You, uh, you have one of your employees uh, 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 leave us uh, last week, correct? Yes. Okay. Part time. Yep. Uh, part time. All right. Thank you. Uh, Chief DeSanto. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to start off by making a report that we were asked to look at the pedestrian crossings on Brentford Avenue between uh, Vine Street and Franklin Street. We know that the county put in that flashing light, and we were asked as a police department, is there anything else we can do to enhance the safety of these pedestrian crossings? So Sergeant Hoffman was given the assignment. He reviewed the area, and um, and his recommendation to um, had the work completed involves a couple different agencies. We've been in touch uh, with the two agencies. One is our own public works. Uh, Lieutenant Soldiers uh, submitted a work order, and I touched base with Kenny Shedeker today, and they're they're in receipt of it, and they should be tackling that either this week or next week. So the uh, the basis of the recommendations are one: uh, repaint those crosswalks, which falls on the county's responsibility. And then try to permanently eliminate the one crosswalk closest to the curb. It's been faded out, but um, it's been grinded down, but still uh, can be seen. So we were asking the county to uh, repeat the two, uh, the one on Fine Street closest to the ice cream bar, and repaint the one on Franklin. Uh, they said uh, they weren't going to just go based off our assessment, they had to do their own assessment. And so that's what they're in the process now. We received confirmation that they're reviewing our request and we'll see if they're concurrent with what we uh, requested. In regards to um, giving some uh, visual aid or uh, the sight line improvement, uh, we are working with Public Works, like I said, Mr. Shedeker, about painting the curb yellow and then start strictly enforcing the uh, 25 feet rule in regards to crosswalks. We feel that's some fair notice, given over the years that um, you know people have crept up closer to the crosswalk. So we want to give them plenty of awareness of where they can park and where they cannot park. So once that's completed, we'll we'll go out there and, uh, as I say, educate the public of uh, properly staying away from crosswalks. So that's the uh, project that we uh, concluded on, and and working with other agencies to get it uh, executed. The items that I want to cover are resolutions that are in your packet. First resolution I want to talk about uh, just briefly, as I had sent an email to the whole uh, committee, is the resolution for the alternative route. What this is, is 
this is just another resource for us to seek individuals who want to enter the law enforcement career. Since we're a civil service town, uh, there is limited options of how to obtain these uh, qualified people. And so this alternate route has, I guess, two ways alternate can be used. One is the traditional one, which I'm always been familiar with, and that's individuals who put themselves through the police academy. They're designated as the alter, alternate route. So what this resolution does, it allows us as not the only means, but an additional means to uh, utilize this alternate route in lieu of a civil service list to go seek individuals who are fully certified, meaning they have attended the basic uh, recruit class and uh, have passed it. Uh, the other part of the alternative, which I learned from talking to other police departments and assisting uh, Mr. Heinhold in uh, producing this resolution is that it's just not just for individuals who have just graduated the academy, that this alternate route can also be used for officers who've been hired and actively a police officer in, in the agency. Um, there's something similar to that, which is often referred to as the intergovernment transfer. But for that to occur, you need both parties to be in agreement. But with this alternate route, it does allow um, for you to hire someone without the, um, I guess, the consent or agreement of another agency that's in civil service. So this is the reason the resolution is in there to give us more options. Uh, right now, we're kind of short staffed. Uh, due to, uh, you know, we have three officers out injured, two on duty, one was off duty injury, and also an officer was active uh, for military leave due to recent uh, occurrences, nation, uh, I guess, internationally, and how it's affected uh, New Jersey. So uh, we're down four officers in terms of able to patrol, and I've been working with patrol since the beginning of September, end of August. And I expect to be on patrol for probably the remainder of September, maybe into October. So if uh, if I'm not always around, I'm, I'm following a 12-hour rotation shift where um, you know I'm off working weekends and have off during the week, certain weeks during the weekdays during certain weeks. So I try to be responsive to your emails, questions. So if uh, if you don't hear from me from a couple of days, that's probably why I probably got off work in the weekend and I'm off a couple of weekdays. So I will try to keep up communication, uh, keep up with your concerns. But like I said, this is just another um, resource that we can utilize because we do have uh, three vacancies coming up. Uh, I'm retiring, Officer Mack is retiring, and, um, and also Officer Newman had left. So, um, and then there's another retirement occurring, occurring uh, in the um, end of next year. So for us to get ahead of the curve, um, we you know we need to use as many resources as all. Our plan is use every resource we have available, you know, including the civil service and including this alternate route resolution if it's passed. Um, before I move on to the next item, any questions about the alternate route resolution? No. Okay. Next uh, resolution is about purchasing a new patrol vehicle. That's just a continuation of our rotating the fleet out. We've uh, made the commitment every year to get a new patrol vehicle where uh, we have six patrol vehicles. So it takes approximately six years for us to get up the fleet tur turned over. So just for your information, current vehicle that we're looking to replace with this order uh, has 121,000 miles. So you can see we're you're not prematurely rotating vehicles out that uh, you know, we get as much as we can out of them. Um, just give you an update on the project that I presented at the last meeting about uh, the detention facility. Uh, we had a meeting with the Department of Corrections. We showed them our schematic. We showed them our design. Uh, the overall concept they didn't have an issue with. They did ask us to incorporate some things in our design, which we're working with the architect to get that done. Once that is items are incorporated in the design. We'll meet with them again. And then um, once I get their satisfaction, and as uh, Mr. Schwab has indicated to you guys, when I come back to you and say, DOC is on board, then uh, we can you know, 
make a final decision about going out there public bids. Um, that's all I got right now. That's a full report. Thank you, Chief. Uh, right. Thanks for the background on the alternative route and uh, the uh, detention facility. Um, appreciate it. And thank you to your your department, uh, you know, the officers that are pulling, you know, on. Uh, thank you. It's just yeah, a, no. it's you, a tough, uh, tough work schedule when you got people that are out uh, uh, recovering or, or deployed and so forth. So uh, covering all the, the soft spots in the schedule, but thank you. All right, thank you. Well, let's see, administration, Mrs. Lohr. Yes, the first item is um, it's that time of year where I uh, have to get ready to put the notice uh, requesting um, appointments uh, for and about for volunteers for the 2022 reorganization. Um, I put a notice in the Beverly Bay on the website and on the bulletin board that uh, if anyone in the town of legal age is uh, uh, interested in being appointed to in our, any of our various boards, commissions, um, to uh, send a uh, email or letter of uh, intent uh, to be requested. And I just would like to um, confirm with the Township Committee that that is how you would like for me to proceed this year with the same format that we've been used many years past. I don't see any need to change. Okay, then I that will first appear in the October Beverly B and will be uh, posted on the bulletin board and the website. We have a few um, events coming up uh, Saturday, October 16th. Um, we have two events here at the uh, municipal uh, complexes. We have a community cleanup day uh, hosted by our public works department uh, from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then we also on the same day, we'll have a shredding event for township residents at the municipal building from eight, I'm um, sorry, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And both of these events will uh, be following COVID um, you know, requirements for masking, not leaving your vehicle, um, those types of things. So that's again, October 16th, we have a shredding event and our community cleanup day. November 20, I'm sorry, September 25th is the fall townwide yard sale. Anyone interested in being on the map should contact our office via email or phone call so that we can include your address on the map. And then on October 9th, right now, the, um, there will be a community day at the firehouse. Uh, it is uh, on for right now. Um, and the township will be participating in that community day. And um, again, uh, and I'll be saying this all through up until, um, you know, the, the meeting in November that uh, New Jersey now has early voting in that, um, registered voters in the state of New Jersey will be able to cast their vote in person on a machine um, so many days prior to the election, just not on election day. And there will be more information coming and posted as far as where the early voting locations will be. Again, Delanco will not have early voting at uh, in Delanco, we're too small to host that, um, but we will post uh, the early voting locations throughout the county. And that's what I have for now, Mayor. Thank you. Very good, thank you. And uh, Planning Board, Mrs. Martin, do you have anything to add from, from your office? Uh, no, I would defer to Mr. Olette, who is a Planning Board member for his next round of comments, I guess, at the next meeting. I would, I, I do wanna jump in here. Uh, I've mentioned, and Mrs. Martin has mentioned the last couple of meetings, we've been working on this uh, Route 130 corridor. Uh, 
plan and there's a citizens advisory committee that uh, we've had two uh, Zoom meetings in the last uh, two, three weeks. And, uh, uh, but Mrs. Martin has been putting in a huge amount of work in uh, calling that stuff or pulling all that stuff together and putting it in a, a format that the, the state will like and accept and uh, adding uh, the professional touch to it. So I just wanted to point out that that's going on and hopefully at our uh, uh, meeting in two weeks, uh, we'll be able to act on those two items and uh, get that moving along in the process. So thank you. Uh, Mr. Allette, do you have anything to add for the, from the planning board? Uh, we did have a hearing uh, for property uh, uh, on uh, the length of Coopertown Road uh, and that project uh, was voted down. They were looking for a variance uh, with some setbacks as far as property lines. Uh, I think they'll end up coming back to see us, but uh, at this point, that project was uh, turned down. It had to do with where, a warehouse. All right, thank you. And let's move on. Consent agenda items. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine, be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Is there any item on the consent that uh, anyone wants pulled out for separate consideration or any questions? All right, here we go. Ordinance 2021-18, amending chapter 135, governing brush, grass, and weeds. First reading by title only and set public hearing date for October 4th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Ordinance 2021-19, amending chapter 234, governing rental property. First reading by title only and set public hearing date for October 4th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Ordinance 2021-20, authorizing acceptance of access and construction easement over block 1411 lot two and block 1500 lots one and 1.01. First reading by title only and set public hearing date for October 4th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Resolution 2021-107 authorizing the lease purchase of a police vehicle under state and national cooperative contracts. Resolution 108, resolution authorizing issuance of raffle license 21-RA-01. Resolution 109, Resolution Authorizing Issuance of Raffle License 21RA-02. Resolution 110, uh, there was a slight change in this one that uh, should have been received late this afternoon as far as a change of date and location. Is that correct, Mrs. Laura? All right. Uh, resolution Authorizing Issuance of Raffle License 21-RA-03. Resolution 111, providing for the insertion of any special item of revenue in the budget of any county or municipality pursuant to NJS uh, 40A colon 4-87 chapter 159 public law 1985. Resolution 112, creating a cannabis subcommittee. Resolution 113, authorizing execution of letter of agreement with Mount Holly Township to amend shared services agreement for the UCC and zoning official services. Resolution 114, resolution of the township of Delanquin County, Burlington, State of New Jersey, authorizing alternative route hiring process for the position of entry level law enforcement officer. Resolution 115, uh, refund of tax overpayments. Resolution 116, re refund of tax overpayments. Uh, 115 was overpayment singular, 116 was overpayments plural. Uh, resolution 117, authorizing change order number one for the 2020 road improvement project. Payment of bills, account, uh, current funds, $792,396.44. Payroll, $199,350.39. Capital, $21,345.16. Escrow trust, $12,108.71. Housing trust, $1,022.50. Municipal open space, $3,513.86. The approval of consent agenda, please. Motion. So moved. So moved by Ms. Fitzpatrick. A second. Second by Ms. Holland, I think. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. 
We'll come back to Mr. Yes. Brown. Yes. yes. There he is. Thank yep. you. Thank you. We got you. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thank you. That uh, meeting's uh, now open. What? Mayor. Yes. May, I ask, may I ask Doug a question on ordinance 2021-120? I mean, 2021-20. Doug, on this one, does this need to be processed to um, any other agency um, at this time? No. Uh, Harry has been in communication with the property owners. Um, and we are working on an or, or a, uh, the ordinance is on, has been passed now on first reading, will be on for second reading. There's no referral or other requirement in the interim. We are working on a document that we'll transmit and coordinate with Harry to get to the property owner so they can review, provide any comments if they have any concerns and we'll reach a, a final form and have that to the governing body hopefully in time for second reading so you can see uh, the final form. But essentially um, there are some existing, Harry can probably explain it better than I, I can. There are some existing drainage improvements that require some repair and this ordinance will cover the easement to protect both the property owner and the township going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. All right, uh, let's see, where was I? Uh, I think meeting open to the public for comments question session two. As usual, state your name and uh, address. Any items in the chat, Mrs. Laura? Just one earlier, uh, Bill Matalevich, and he is um, he's stating, I'm looking at the DVRPC slash DOT Safe Routes to School grant. It's for crosswalks, new sidewalk, and other safety enhance enhancements within two miles of a school which covers essentially all of Delanco. I'm told it's not worth pursuing if it's less than 300,000. So we need to inventory areas where we could spend the money. The grant is due October 14th, if we want to pursue it. And that's that was in the chat. I would defer that to Harry because we've applied for that grant. How many times now, Harry? To try to get the sidewalks done yeah. from yeah, we actually applied through the Bridge Commission, I believe, twice, and 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 we were um, preparing the grant at one time, and it was decided uh, that was 2018, the last time it was out, and it was decided by the committee not to go forward with that um, for various reasons. One is you have to inv involve the school board. Um, there's a process that you have to get through with them. Um, it's a very difficult grant to get. The last round. There was only four grants given in the whole state um, for this work. And it's very expensive. And as Bill said, I used to use that same benchmark of three, if, you, if it's not $300,000 or more, it's not worth doing it because of the administration and, and uh, engineering extra costs for this it's federal money. Um, I would venture to say, if you're not gonna do 500,000 or more, it's not worth doing. Um, and again, there was only four grants given out in the whole state at on the last round. Thank you, Harry. There are no other uh, comments or questions in the chat at this time. I don't see any hands raised or comments or questions. If anyone does have a comment or question, you need to unmute and state your name and address for the record. Hearing and seeing, hearing nothing. This uh, second session two is now closed to the public. Uh, status of coronavirus disease, COVID-19 and executive orders. Uh, I haven't seen any new EOs come down and nothing's really changed in that respect. Um, we can just encourage people to get the vaccine you're comfortable with and wear a mask and, and uh, you know, we're, we're just kind of stumbling along here nationwide uh, uh, trying to get beyond this thing. And uh, there seem to be hot spots. Uh, there's some too many states that uh, are ignoring the facts and, uh, and not helping their, their people, their, the public. And so um, 
it's up to everyone as part of a as part of a society to uh, to protect themselves and protect our families and protect our neighbors. So um, we can just uh, put up with this and do what we're supposed to do and get it behind us and get back to some sense of normalcy. Anyone have anything to add to that? All right. First of all, so we're going to con continue the decision is to continue with Zoom meetings until you decide otherwise, correct? I guess that's the path, yes. Okay. Zoom, Zoom on. Okay, so the meeting at the end of September and all of October for sure will continue to be Zoom. Okay. Yes. Correspondence, Mrs. Lord? I have two pieces of correspondence. The first one, it, um, there's a copy in your packet. It was received from the, um, uh, the Burlington County uh, Fire Commissioners, a uh, fire district number one, they adopted a resolution actually uh, recommending that the township committee adopt a ordinance establishing um, minimum heights for, sh for commercial carports. And that is in your packet. Yeah, we saw all that uh, as far as uh, I guess that went out countywide, correct? I mean, that was that's a request everywhere that uh, that was their recommendation, correct? I that, that is from Keith Mormon. That is from our fire district, Delanco Township Fire District. But obviously, you know, well, okay. Yes, that um, they are recommending amendment to our code establishing minimum height for commercial carports. Um, their recommendation is a minimum height of 14 feet at the lowest point so they can get their apparatus under those structures in the event of an emergency. Keith Mormon asked that this um, resolution, that the uh, fire district's resolution be placed on, on this agenda for consideration by the township committee. So uh, that's the, that if we were to stop, if the Township Committee were to establish the minimum height requirements, it would have to be done by ordinance and become uh, codified in our code in order to, to be enforceable uh, uh, for site plan and uh, uh, permit applications. And then bounce that to the planning board, correct? I'll just refer to Doug if that needs a consistency review. It would, and I wonder maybe we should ask for their input up front on that since it's really a yeah. planning and planning board function. This way they're not they're not seeing it for the first time on a referral after it's been introduced, but we get their opinion up front. Yeah. And, and can, can I comment on their standard? I, I what ha, what has triggered this from the fire uh, district is that the um, Self storage facility at 700 Creek Road is in as part of their site plan approval did receive approval to put up structures carport type structures to protect RVs and boats um, that people might want to store out there. And so that's one issue and then there is an application that may be pending for the abundant life site from a solar company where they would like to install carports with solar panels out at the abundant life site in their parking area as well. So this is what has triggered this um, memo from the fire district. Hey, I have a question on that. When, when those uh, approvals come in, does the fire district not get an opportunity to comment and submit a report? The fire official, uh, I give him the paperwork and he does review the uh, site plan applications and he does comment. So he is aware that that those structures out at um, 700 Creek, that was certainly reviewed. But as we now have another one coming in, uh, I believe the fire district would just like to make this part of our code so that there is no issue where something might slip past a review by the fire official. 
Is the planning board aware of this request? The planning board is not aware of this request. The carports at the facility on Creek Road, the uh, the storage facility, what were they approved at? What height? I don't know. I just know that they, um, the structures are being built to accommodate RVs, which are certainly higher than your standard vehicle and boats. So Randy Johnson looked at that and said that those structures are fine. But now that we have another possible pending application for more carport, carport structures, that is what has triggered the request. So I would just encourage that they make that report again to make sure that the planning board has that information before them at the time of approval, because even if we adopt something now, it may not apply depending on when the application was filed. Yeah. Now, does that apply to just conventional car parking? I mean, that's what Abundant Life, I think, would be asking for, right? It's just for pe people in their cars. And they're not parking RVs out there. No, but in order to get the apparatus underneath of the carport structure in the event of something like a vehicle fire, that oh. that is what they are requesting. Makes sense. Hmm. It's a safety issue. So would the Township Committee like to refer this um, yeah. fire commissioner yeah. resolution and, and, requ and request uh, for review? before yes. the committee were to act formally by uh, by ordinance to yeah. get their input? Yes. Yeah. yeah, send it on to the plan, to the board, planning board. I think part of this also is with the uh, solar panels that uh, folks are looking to put on top of these uh, carports or, uh, so that becomes a concern. But like if if the township, if we you know we had looked into this a couple of years ago, putting a, you know a shelter, a, you know we had that solar company approach us, and they wanted to put uh, you know the the, the shelter with a, a solar array on top of it, they would have that would have to be 14 feet up, right? Even though it's only one of our police cars underneath it. Right, that's what they're requesting. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it, it doesn't seem to make sense. I mean, but anyway, all right. Yeah, send it on to the board and let them take it, tear it apart. Yeah, all 14 right. feet is very standard. Anything under 14 feet, you have to uh, really, um, when you're traveling, I had a motor home 12 feet six high. So you really pay attention to those bridge signs because uh, you don't want to hit it. But uh, 14 feet, if it's under 14 feet, then you have to notify the drivers that there's a low clearance coming up. 14 feet should clear most uh, delivery trucks, FedEx, UPS, uh, uh, and the such. So we, we should have it mapped out. All right, very good. Anything else, Mrs. Lord, correspondence? Yes, there is, uh, the second piece of correspondence is, it's also in your packet, a request from a resident, um, Joe and Patty Montgomery. They're requesting a waiver of the accrued interest from their August tax bill. Um, as they, uh, their letter says that, that because they were on uh, vacation and the mailing of the tax bill, they did not receive it until they got back and they were, um, a little bit late paying and uh, they are requesting a waiver of the late fee due to the change in the mailing, the normal mailing cycle of the uh, tax bill. And then you also have in your packet, um, our tax collectors uh, ad, uh, comments and advice on this, on this matter. Uh, I'd like to comment. I first saw this uh, email and I was compassionate with the homeowner and I thought, geez, it's only 34 bucks. And when I go in, I'll, I'll just vote, like go give her her money back. But I, I gotta give credit to Misty Laval, our um, the tax collector. She really laid it out uh, sternly. And I don't know why this 
fabrics as well. And John froze up again. Froze up. Yeah. Well, maybe he'll unfreeze a little bit, like the last time he. Yeah, John, any uh, any other comments from the committee on this one? It it seems, yeah, as uh, a tax collector is is it's uh, there's no option to waive that. Uh, that penalty for, for um, state law. Mayor, excuse me for the interruption. Uh, looks like John Brown got kicked off. So when he gets back in, I'll let you know. All right. Did anyone else read that differently or? No, I, I read it and it, uh, it looks like you can't do it you would be setting a precedent. And I think we had this issue before and uh, the tax collector had uh, noted the statute. Yeah, it's, it's, it's un you know, it's unfortunate with vacation time, you know, the, the resident says they were out uh, for two weeks out of August and the bills according to the tax office were mailed out uh, early August. Yeah, mailed August 6th. Yeah, so. that, you know, the mailing, I didn't get my tax bill until August 16th. So, I mean, they may have mailed them on August 6th, but yeah. they, you know, if, I mean, if I was away, I wouldn't have had my bill either. Yeah, um, well, certainly can, before, the, before the end of the month. Right, yeah. yeah. But, so, well, it appears our hands are tied on this. And uh, yeah, it does. That's according to our tax clerk. So, anyway, it doesn't appear any action is uh, there's no action available to us on that one. So, what any the, com comments on that matter, Mrs. Laura? No, I was just going to ask the committee if they would like for me, as the secretary to the governing body, to respond to the um, property owner or our tax collector. Yeah, to the property owner that uh, by state law were unable to to uh, accommodate their request. Okay, I will respond to the property owner. Thank you, Janice. Did uh, Mr. Brown come back online? Or is he still? No, Mayor, he uh, still is not on. I... All right. He's coming what? on now. Uh, apologize. Hang on. Just let yeah. him back in. You do uh, have one other piece of correspondence. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned it to Kitty uh, from the state and DEP that they approved the uh, Chaytree grant that uh, we applied for a few months ago. It's conditional, and we'll get the detail that uh, Chaytree commissioners will work with the state on. But uh, We'll find out the final details on that, but that's just for an FYI. Great. John, welcome back. You froze up uh, about five seconds into your, your comments there regarding the tax uh, issue, the late tax payment. Did you decide anything on that uh, letter for those residents? Uh, we wanted to hear from you, but it seems that we're unable to do anything by us state law prevents us from uh, uh, any relief there. Okay. So. Maybe she's the one that cut me off. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Any other correspondence that we covered all? What did I miss with that shade tree grant, Richard? What did I miss? Uh, the DP conditionally approved the application for the grant for the tree planting. No kidding. 150,000? Uh, There's all the DP. The final, the final amount has not been determined, but right, additional great. approval and he's working with Shade Tree to finalize things. So I'm okay. sure that John and Bill will let us know as they get closer. Very good. All right, but, uh, uh, see discussion uh, item, uh, proposed ordinance amending Township Code Chapter 216 governing park regulations to clarify provisions on passive public areas. Uh, 
Mr. Heinhold, do you want to elaborate what you've done? Sure. So there was um, there was an email that occurred the, the, the day of the last meeting. And uh, there was some concern. John, can you try muting for just a second? Thank you. Um, there was some concern about how the park regulations would be read. So we took a look at it and decided that while the intent was likely to cover not only active and passive public areas, but also uh, this, the street ends, which we call passive public areas under the ordinance, that the language throughout was not clear. So um, we went through and revised the ordinance to make it clear that we're covering all these areas where appropriate. Uh, there are some sections within the ordinance where it's clearly talking about um, active or passive parks as opposed to just generally public park area or public lands. Uh, but the intent of this revision is to try and bring it to a clarity so that every section that's covered under the ordinance, passive parks, active parks, and these uh, what are mostly street ends at the Rancocas and uh, along the river are covered. Um, there were a couple of other minor things that I noted in there as I was going through it that I just felt were not uh, applicable or language that must have been taken from somewhere that really doesn't apply to Delanco where I revised it. But the, the overall purpose is just to make it clear that these regulations are intended to apply not just to our active parks not just to our passive parks, but to the uh, to the public areas that we have on the street ends as well. Something else that I uh, noticed, and I had a, an exchange with Doug and discussed it with, uh, uh, I think Mrs. Lohr before or after her vacation, but uh, in section W item eight regarding, uh, smoking tobacco products. Uh, it seems to have a lot of exceptions in there and criteria. And uh, I think the state, uh, state of New Jersey back in 2018, uh, basically uh, enacted a, a blanket ban on smoking on all state parks and uh, you know beaches and so forth. And it just seemed uh, as far as an enforcement and uh, just to make it easier and in, in one size fits all that we eliminate all the other uh, exceptions, you know, 25 feet from a building or uh, and, and these other things here and just you know, adopt it or, or change that paragraph eight to just no smoking uh, you know, or and relate it. Uh, activities uh, uh, within our, our public's, public lands, public parks. So. Also mentioned in paragraph B, tobacco use is not permitted. It's said there and then W8, it goes into some detail. Yeah. yeah. So there's a conflict there. And, and he uses thing, tobacco rather than smoking in general. And then the other thing I got, Digging a little deeper on this is that cannabis is not is not tobacco. Um, it's a completely different scientific animal or classification. And so I was wondering if that was going to be something to fall through a crack in our in our ordinance here. So uh, whether something needs to be uh, wordsmithed around that. Okay, I can. Uh... I can take those comments and make some edits to what we have and circulate a revised draft based upon that. I mean, what's the rest of the committee think? That's, that's, that's just me talking. I want to get, to get everyone else's thoughts on this. Well, just keep in mind, CBD is now also a big, big factor. I know some people vape CBD, so I don't know. 
that's something that you want to cover because it's not tobacco and it's not it's not cannabis in between. What is keep that I'm, I'm kind of ignorant on some of that stuff, Chief. Is that is that like a smokable? I mean, is that how that's used or? Yeah, that, I mean, it, it comes in oil form. You can vape it. It's you know, it's not illegal. Um, it's it's not cannabis. It has a lower THC level than, than cannabis. Uh, so, um, but it's it's legal. But I believe you can vape it. So, I don't know if that, the vaping would cover everything. You know, from from any kind of related to vaping oil to cannabis to CBD. If there's some some terminology that you see in your in your uh, world, uh, Chief, could you pass that on to Mr. Heinhold? That's that seems to cover what we're trying to encapsulate here. Yeah, if, uh, if I come across anything, um, I'll reach out to some local chiefs see if they tackled this issue yet, or if they have tackled it. What uh, what mistakes did they make, or what you know what language they would use differently now? Anyone have, else? have we enforced no smoking on the riverfront? The fishermen that are down there, have we ever wrote a ticket for it? I've never written a ticket for it. Jesse, I'm having trouble hearing you. You're muffled. I've never written a ticket for it. Well, let's ask this question. Would you or any of the officers write a ticket for it if there was a fisherman down there smoking? I mean, be realistic. If I don't. I don't see a police officer getting out of his vehicle and issuing a ticket to someone smoking a cigarette while down there. It, I don't think it would happen, would it, Jesse? No, I don't. I mean, we wouldn't purposely stop somebody from fishing during regular hours. If they're there after hours, we would, you know, tell them one: the park is closed. Two: you need to move on. Right. I'm, I'm not sure what generated this discussion item, but. Uh... I guess it's because marijuana is becoming legal. Is it that we don't, we want to make sure in the ordinance we tackle uh, no marijuana smoking versus cigarette smoking versus vaping? Is that what this is? Because I, 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 I don't want to smell, I don't want to smell, I smell it down a riverbank. Teenagers are down there and, you know, it's a little embarrassing as I'm walking with my wife. These, group of teenagers smoking weed over there, as far as I knew, it was still illegal. So, so you know, John, I think, does... I think the originally came up and there are questions about how the overall provisions apply. There's some inconsistencies within the language itself that we're trying to clean up. So it's one of the things where I think as this ordinance evolved over time and we were trying to craft um, recognition of different public recreation areas um, that the language uh, wasn't all crafted at once. So there was some, some items that needed to be cleaned up just to make sure the intent was clear. And so now we've gotten into this discussion, as Richard pointed out, there's an inherent conflict or lack of clarity on the smoking provision itself. I personally think the the W-8 language is, is antiquated language from probably decades ago. Yeah. Um, has a lot of issues in terms of enforcement. And if you think about 25 feet off of a playing field, um, that's, you know, you could, under our ordinance, you could theoretically legally smoke in a group of other parents who are also watching from the stands. So um, I do think it's worth discussing and, and updating. There's the smoke issue in general, but I think it seems to me, rather than trying to figure out what the person is smoking, if they're smoking cigarettes, cigars, pipes, cannabis, CBD, whatever the, I don't even know if there's other substances that can be put into other smoking apparatus, but it probably from an enforcement standard would just be easier to say, we're not going to permit it and here's where we're not going to permit it. Is everyone okay with that direction for Mr. Heinhold? Seems to make sense. If again, we're dealing with all uh, 
municipal parks or municipal property. Yeah, but it would just make sense to just have no smoking, period, rather than acknowledging every pipe. Isn't that sufficient, Doug? Yeah, I think I think I may phrase it that way and just say, you know, including but not limited to, but then ultimately the rule is no smoking because, uh, you know, I don't know how things evolve and we don't need our police officers trying to figure out what's in the, what's in the pipe or what's, you know. What's in the bowl. Right. And I think what's in, the, in the initial discussions, I think too, um, the street ends where the benches are along the river, um, by their definition in the code, uh, were not included in the smoking ban. So that was not clear. And by definition, they are not considered parks. And the language in our code basically would allow smoking along all the street ends at the benches. And, and so there was some discussion about, is that really OK? Well, or do you want to also clean up the language to so that we don't have people smoking down on the benches? If you And if you look at the amendment, the argument could have been made that those provisions not just the no smoking provisions, but a lot of the regulations that we have wouldn't apply or, or someone could at least make the argument that they didn't apply. I think the intent was always that they would apply, but the language right. is being clarified by this proposed amendment. Right. I think as a, as a follow up to the question Kate asked about fishermen, W8 does finish up that you shouldn't be using the product or smoking, we could now say, in a manner that creates a nuisance or unsafe condition, as opposed to a total ban. That's one of the questions that you have to decide because if it's a total ban, then as Kate asked, well, police officers should be, you know, uh, showing up and saying, don't smoke those cigarettes, as opposed to, usually it's self-enforcing, meaning somebody calls and makes a complaint and says the smoking is bothering me. So that's probably why some of these rules were there to say there's certain areas you don't want any smoking, but there's certain areas, as long as they don't bother anyone, no one really cares. So something you should think about in terms of enforcement. Well, no, I don't think anyone's going to call for, for someone smoking. It, it's just it, if someone's going to go down on a street end bench or walk on a trail up at the dunes and there's someone on the trail ahead of them, you know, smoking, whatever they are, or sitting down here uh, at a street end and smoking that per person's probably going to be discouraged and said, I don't want to smell that all the, you know, for the next 45 yeah. minutes, I wanted to sit here or walk on the trail and I'm just going to, you know, and why should, you know, we, we, we spend all kinds of time and money and effort to create these, these spaces for people to enjoy. And if, you know, uh, uh, there's uh, something offensive there that, uh, chases them away, then, uh, I think, this, this mechanism, this ordinance, uh, cleaning this up uh, um, is a way of, of ensuring a quality place for our residents to enjoy, you know, our open spaces and parks and so forth, so. Yeah, just have to determine what kind of enforcement mechanism. Is it a complaint basis or are you expecting a police officer who might see someone sitting on the bench, the open space to stop and at noon and tell them, sorry, you can't do that. So that's something you have to, have that discussion be realistic about well, most 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 law is in a society is 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 self-enforcing you know the police and law enforcement can't be everywhere aren't everywhere and, and can't enforce everything but it's it's a society that has to you know basically police themselves and i i think if you just say no smoking in our parks and public places period you know and then it's it becomes a societal peer pressure not to do it so uh let's see anything else by the way when doug uh, redoes that should we forward that on to uh rec so they can because these are regulations for parks that they oversee sure get their input at the same time sure okay uh looks like we're at the end of things anything else uh 
I'd like to go uh, again I'm, uh, for ordinance 2021-18, brush, grass, and weeds. I know uh, we passed it on uh, first reading tonight. Uh, I, I understand the spirit of the ordinance. My question, again, goes to grass. And uh, so folks have ornamental grass, they have uh, lemongrass, they've got different types of plants that are grass. Uh, how's that fall into this ordinance? You know, uh, if the code enforcer is coming out, you know, and somebody's got ornamental grass, you know, uh, they have to cut it back down to six inches or below six inches. You know, the nature of that plant is different than our lawn grasses. And I think this was, the ordinance is supposed to, or the spirit of the, the ordinance, I think pertains to lawns, but yeah. someone again could interpret it differently. Yeah, I think it's a good point there. Uh, I remember seeing uh, a house, uh, it, was, it was a project house uh, and they had a, a drought tolerant grass that they had planted. Uh, and it was, it almost looked like when you see like a, a field of wheat after a heavy rain, it's kind of laid down and, and the grass just kind of had this wavy appearance. It, you know, the blades must have been, I don't know, six, eight, 10 inches long, but it was all kind of laid down and it gave the yard kind of a rolling look to it. And that's what it was supposed to do. It was only supposed to be cut like every six weeks or something like that, or if, if at all during the season, but it was a drought tolerant. And, uh, and I was, you know, when Firm brought it up, uh, you know, talked to me earlier today, he mentioned that. And uh, I remember seeing that, that uh, project house on, the, on a home tour in another town. And I was just kind of curious how that would fit in or not fit into this. Um, well, to me, if it, ornamental grass is used like a planting, like a garden, people don't have ornamental grass in the middle of their yards unless they have a garden in the middle of their yard. So grass to me is lawn. It's almost common sense. I don't think of uh, ornamental grass as your lawn fern. You have a lot of ornamental grass around your property in the back there. I don't consider that your lawn. And that's okay, but it's still called grass. So therefore, you know, just like we deal with, you know, we've got all these issues with fences. You know, here our ordinance says grass in it. So, you know, again, so, I in the spirit of, of the ordinance, but the I guess the enforcer or the code enforcer, or whoever's going to be following up on this, you know, to, I guess, be able to clearly uh, have terminology of what we're trying to address. What about if we said uh, grass or weeds? Because my yard's mostly weeds, but I keep it at, you know, you know, mm -hmm. I get it cut. So if it's grass or weeds, that are as part of a lawn. It's lawn. I mean, you know, why don't we bring this up before we pass the ordinance for first reading? Well, I think, I mean, just, I think the intent, again, this comes from our code enforcement officer who wanted a, a, a very set height in the, in the regulation so that they could clearly define where they were going to enforce and have um, something that they could back up. And it just wasn't opinion that it was too high. <clears throat> so I think the intent was not to cover in ornamental grasses, which right. are really almost like shrubs. Yes. Um, Scott Taylor and Michelle Taylor probably disagree with my simplification of that, but um, <laughs> but I think that's the intent, and that's what the code enforcement officer and all the language you've been discussing is looking for. So <clears throat> we could always do an amendment um, that I don't think is a substantive amendment. It's just sort of a clarification. Oh that this will not apply to ornamental grasses um, as well, a last I, sentence to that. I was just, I was gonna ask if, I know it's been introduced, but if we were to just for clarification purposes before this is posted, you know, and put on the website, um, 
if we just add at the end of 135.1, where it says it shall be unlawful for any property owner to plant any grass, weeds, brush, or other vegetation, vegetation to become overgrown, grass and weeds shall be trimmed to a height of six inches or less at all times. How about this? Then say ornamental style grasses planted as part of, uh, planted as part of landscaping shall be excluded from this section. Yeah, exactly. That's like great. That? Like That's that? Perfect. Perfect. There you so, go. so if, if Township yeah. Committee, and if Doug, if you're okay, the fact that it's already been introduced, but we go ahead and add that at this time with, with the consent of a majority Township Committee, then I can add that language uh, and it would be part of what is published and posted on the website. And, and actually, you know, it's uh, these types of ordinances are published by summary. So this whole, this full language may not even be in there to begin with. So is there any legal problem with adding this after, you know, to, you know, later in the evening tonight? No, and again, I, I think that it's all consistent with what the intent was. So we're just right. making it clear uh, going forward. I don't think it's a material change to what was intended. Okay, it's just a clarification of what grass is and isn't. Right. right. We're talking about all kinds of grass tonight. <laughs> Keep your weed trimmed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mike Templeton has weeds. He admitted it in public. Are, are, are we at the end here? Only if you need an executive session or if anybody has anything else for public session. Mr. Heinold, anything for us behind closed doors? I do not, Mayor. All right. All right. A motion to adjourn. So so move. Move. Second. Second. We're out of here. Thank you all. Well done. All in favor. Bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night. Good night, Bye. everyone. Thank Bye. you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Aaron. Oh, you're welcome. Have a good night. All right. See you guys tomorrow. See you Thank tomorrow. Thank you, Aaron. You're welcome. Good night. Good night.